It's especially great because with me here tonight is an old <laughs> friend. That, how many years has it been? Oh my gosh, it's been a really long time. It's been I mean, too long. Darren Dohe, how are you, so my much. friend? I'm doing well. 310 really doing well. Rodworks. Yes, sir. How'd that name come up anyway? You know, uh, people may or may not believe it, but, but it was actually uh, just a moment in time that I was chatting online yeah. with Sam from Island Fishing Tackle. Sam, a friend, a mutual friend. A mutual Great friend. Great guy. And so Island, uh, the Island Tackle owner and I were on the chat and I was telling him I was going to start something new. He said, why don't you try to pay tribute to all of the great companies that had come from the South Bay? Yeah. You know, we had so many, you know, that were there either in Gardena or the adjacent city. Talking and, about tackle stores and uh, tackle stores or even manufacturers. Yeah. We had Sabre, we have CalStar yeah. in Gardena. Uh, we had Classic Tackle, which was one of the very, very original importers of imported goods. Uh, they were there in Gardena. And so um, that was kind of the lead. And so I said, you know what? What about 310? You know, because we're, we're here it's now. It's a good idea. It's 310. Yeah. So our area code is 310. Right. Rodworks is what we do. And, and so that all came together. So many great people have come out of that area, as you said. I mean, you were at Arts Fishing Tackle yes. at one time. Yes, Yo's, your, your, your store is close to Yo's, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're very close to Yo's. I, I was uh, a young kid going in there to buy plastic worms to fish at a laundry park. Uh, at Yo's school. Fishing Tackle? Yep. Yeah. Was he they, there? He was there, yeah. and he was. Uh, they were actually one of the real big freshwater bass tournament places to get stuff. And yeah. So, so I, I would shop there, even though I was working across the city over at Arts Tackle. Yeah. So. Right. <laughs> I fished with Yo on a searcher. Like, I think he used to come down every Sunday. Wow. And I was a kid in those days, you know, 17, 18, and I just like... I'd watch him fish and catch bluefin tuna, and I'd just like, I gotta, you know, copy this. Yeah, guy. I gotta be talk like to him. him. So I would talk <laughs> to him all the time and try to figure out what was going on. And I do remember he caught a bluefin. I go, boy, that's gonna be good on the barbecue. And he looked at me almost kind of sternly and said, "No fire. We'll come to this tuna." <laughs> yeah, I still remember yeah. that. That was 50 years ago, yeah. for God's sake. Shame on you <laughs> to even think that they were going to He's right. It up. Yeah. I mean, they are better that way, I yeah. think, right? Don't you? Yeah. You know what? Bluefin. I, I, I'll be honest with you, Philip. One of the strangest things about me, Darren, is that uh, I am fatally allergic to fish. Really? As a matter of fact, I'm not even supposed to be fishing. So You mean if, they, if you get... get I, man, I get jacked up by the blood on the deck. Really? I got one little drop of blood in my eye. My eye just swelled up. So how did you get into this business? I became allergic after I really started fishing a lot. Okay. And so... It's uh, weird. That happens sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and honestly, my parents couldn't keep me away from fishing, so there's no way an, an allergy was going to keep me away from fishing. You got the bug. So, yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was just... That was what I had to do. Yeah. So, yeah. so even today, even today, I, I keep myself away from fish. I can't eat it. I'm can't do the whole cross contamination thing on the grill. Oh, right. I've got to yeah. ask everybody to, you know, cook my stuff separate. <laughs> right. And, you know, it's just one of the things that I have to deal with. And I have an EpiPen in my bag all the time. Either oh, shoot, that's great. Yeah, either I leave it with uh, with the the chef in the galley or I have one in my tackle box. So excellent, yeah. excellent. You got a bunch of people already oh, coming man. on here. Oscar Geronimo, good evening, folks. I'm ready for this podcast. Do you know him? <laughs> I do not. All right. Well, that's even better, right? You know, I thank you. Showing up. <laughs> people that say that to me are my family members. Oh man, people I pay ahead of time. My family doesn't even communicate with me, so you know. <laughs> well, I got you beat there. That's because they want money. Yeah. Yeah, I'm broke, so they're they're out. Um, Five Forty Slinger. Uh, All you right. know Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Jeff's the best. Isn't He's he? a great guy. Yeah, uh, military guy. So we thank him for his service and just a fantastic guy. He says hello to you. Great. And Stephen Sheriff, I used to work with. Darren's wife, Vivian. Oh, man. We used to talk fishing a lot. She loves it. Small I, world. Your wife loves fishing? She loves fishing. That's great. And she's a, she's a uh, do-it-all-herself kind of guy, very a uh, gal. Yeah. She just wants to do it herself. And so, Darren, you go somewhere else. I'll take care of this on my own. And one, one time I just sat back and I videotaped her from 
cast to catch. It was fantastic. Wow. She went out there and got herself a nice big albacore when they used to <laughs> well, be When there used to be albacore? Yeah, yeah, when there used to be albacore. This is the year. I you know, predicted it one more time I, again. I tell you what, I, I support you in that. I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's about time. So. <laughs> Anybody has a question, please be sure you ask. Uh, we are more than happy to help out. Uh, Richard says, good evening, Phil. Good evening, Richard. Ru Ruben <laughs> Lopez. Uh, sound a little choppy. Is it screwed up, you guys? Or is the sound bad? Hopefully we'll get that Let straightened out. Know. We'll see. And then uh, Big Gare says, used to fish with Yo every Monday on the oh. searcher. He's right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It was Mondays. Uh, hello, everyone. And wrapped a lot of rods at Bob's Sporting Goods ah. in WLA. Ruben Lopez says our sound is a little bad. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, Ruben. We're all mic'd. Are you good? Yeah, we're good, right? I think I'm. I think I'm okay. Hey, we're working on it, Ruben. But uh, I'm the sound tech, the uh, host, <laughs> and everything else. So you know we're in trouble. We. Uh, when's the last time we saw? Each other? Was it oh, back in the stadium? I, I don't think it was. I don't think it was that far back. But you know that was a really memorable time. You know, I yeah. had I had just been hired on to uh, work at Seeker Fishing Rods when they were in Long Beach. Right. And it literally was the day before, the day before I started there at Seeker, you had me come on the show uh, that you were doing out at Angel Stadium and yeah. I got to talk about it. And right. So, you know, at the time that was clearly my dream job. And so I had such a fantastic uh, opportunity ahead of me and you welcomed me into the studio and my wife was there. And You're a great guest. It. I mean, come on, <laughs> you are. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. So. Did we do the Hooters thing downstairs we before? Did. We yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. That was so, fun always. That was cool. Yeah. That was cool. The girls down there were really nice, and yeah. we do like fishing pond stuff yeah. and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into, uh, before we get into 310 Rod Works, mm -hmm. how did you get hooked on fishing? How did that all happen? Boy, I tell you what, it's such a long story. I, I've probably forgotten a whole bunch of it, but uh, my original fishing mentor yeah. was my mom. Really? Yeah, I must have been three or four years old. I uh, I got to go to a lingerie park with her and feed the ducks and cast a line with a bobber and a hook and a mealworm. Yeah. And catch bluegill and little bass. And I just had a great time. So much so that my dad had a makeshift koi pond in our backyard and I was out there fishing for those things. You got to be kidding. Oh, man. no. I, I just, I those loved poor it. Those koi. <laughs> Oh, they treated me well. You know, I had some really good days. I'll bet. <laughs> but uh, but it was uh, it was really really a long time ago, and I've had such great fishing mentors. I, I gotta say, um, one of my fondest memories was to go during spring break with uh, a family friend of mine. Um, actually, my friend from school in fifth grade, so ten years. Uh, her dad was a tournament bass fisherman. Yeah. So they used to invite me out on their bass boat and we would go do bass fishing when he had time. And uh, every spring break, we would do a California tour. Wow. We would start off at Lake Nacimiento. We would camp there. We would go across the way to Lake San Antonio. We'd then come back down to Kachuma, spend a couple days there. Yeah. And uh, we got to do so much great fishing and fishing there was so good. Uh, the white white bass uh, in Nacimiento. Yeah, right. So much I've never fun. done that, but what I've heard a about blast. it. it yeah. It's you know you actually get to see freshwater foamers out there of these little really? pan fish that are just slashing these. So shad. it's They're exciting, right? It. Yeah. Visual and yeah. yeah, and they pull hard and and that's uh, just a ton of fun. But Mr. and Mrs. Chin, they treated me so good. Um, for any of the viewers out there that might be. Uh, old school bass fisherman. Maybe you remember the club, the South Bay Lunkers. He was a he was a part of that. So he was a local guy that yeah. uh, was a, a, a just a great great fisherman, great mentor, great man. Uh, and uh, and his wife was was always there to support and and provide. So, yeah. So it was really a, a great experience. So started there, did some bass fishing, got hired at the tackle store at uh, thirteen years old right got my work permit from school and i rode my bike there after i got home from school and and um worked at arts tackle at the old store on gardena boulevard i and, remember and i used to go over there all the time Boy, i, I tell you that really was a, a great place to 
cut your teeth in so many different areas other than bass fishing because none of them were bass fishermen. They were all saltwater fishermen. Yeah, totally. And so I got to really get into that. Um, Russ Eisers operation when we built the new building next, right next door, door he was right next door and so i got to hang out with russ and get really well and and again just incredible uh, support and encouragement yes um and a lot of a lot of trash talking too yeah. you know he was he was such a great guy and i just really uh enjoyed that about uh about that time so did that uh, moved on after uh, several years and, and got into other things like cars and all that other stuff, but came back around, uh, worked a little bit as a local rep yeah. for Megabait at the time. Right. Uh, that was right when they were really killing it, yeah. when they were the lead jig to fish. Um, and so I got to see a lot of that, and that was also when there was still albacore to catch. And so we had a great time. Well, you're really yeah. on that albacore thing. You know, huh? I, I tell you what, it was uh, rubbing it, was it in all, on me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a really great time, and it's such a fun fish to catch. Um, and yet, even with all of that uh, exposure to fishing, I still hadn't got into or started cutting my teeth on the bigger fish, the yes. long range fishing, and all that. So even though the opportunity existed, I didn't never t took it. Yeah. So. Uh, Moving forward, yes. Uh, back in 2011, uh, I get hired on at, at Seeker, yeah. and we start doing the Seeker thing. And, and I'll be honest with you, that was probably one of the most exciting times uh, of my fishing life. Uh, we took that company and, and really created some great, uh, great br branding yeah. uh, within that company and um, created some great product did a lot of great exposure. I don't know if how many people m might remember this, but in 2012 uh, at the Fred Hall show, Seeker really broke out. I mean, that was the moment uh, for that company, uh, at least during the time that I was there. Yes. It, it really broke out and, and we took a, a, a big risk, big financial roll, and we went from- Rolled uh, the dice, huh? Yeah, yeah, 10 by, I think, 30 booth, a 10 by 30 to a 20 by 40 oh sure and right next door to fisherman's landing so that was a big benefit yeah because all those people that are going to fisherman's landing yeah and for the people that might remember this 10 years ago we actually built the stern of a boat and oh, right. we had the boarding stairs that was we expensive had a, right uh we did it all ourselves oh, shoot we That's literally great. built everything what a ourselves. great idea and it had a it had a teak rail it had metal stanchions it had the bulwarks it had the exhaust ports it had a fake bait tank on it and during our uh, we hosted seminars on that stern right, of that boat right and to drum up the crowd we bought hundreds and hundreds of wham swim baits and we were chumming them into the aisle. <laughs> and you had people yelling and... We had people going. We Man. had our, our junior pro staffers on the deck, like pinheads, throwing these swim baits That's into awesome. the aisle. And, and Throw it a was, scoop! Yeah, we had one where they loaded up the, the dip net and just oh put it out God, there. That it was, is so it was cool. so cool. That is and, um, I, I I really think that... I the, like that innovative kind that, of thinking, right? That exposure is really what reignited people's excitement about the brand yeah um, because coming into the company the very common uh, thing said was that seekers are my dad's rods right you know I'm a Calstar guy I'm a Phoenix guy yeah. I'm this guy I'm that guy and so when we started coming up with these new ideas and embracing what we did well um, like the like the long range fishing. Yes, we really started to create a, a community around the name. Yeah, and so I I'm just I'm just excited. We were English that yes, and that it still carries forward today. You know the the company now it, it has different ownership. They've taken it in in a a, a different direction. Yeah, uh, of their own. But I think with the effort that we put in so many years ago, yeah. I think it's still carrying forward today because of our intention. Yes. We, were, we intended 
for the people to really grab a hold of us and, and really love us. Let so. me grab a couple of questions sure. here because uh, Mark Fujimoto says, you're not allergic to ice cream, are you? <laughs> What's Mark know that I don't know? Boy, I tell you what, if you guys are ever in the area and you need a dessert and you're anywhere close to my shop, please stop in. We always have ice cream in the freezer. We've got a cold drink for you. We have an entire galley of snacks. And even if you want a frozen burrito out of the freezer, Man. we've got a microwave there. I want to come in. visit you, but Please I'm trying to keep the weight off. Please do. Just come on in. Uh, our, all of our stuff is calorie-free, fat-free. You fat got any free, keto, friendly everything, stuff? Yeah, we have everything. <laughs> you know a guy named Stephen Pham? I do. He says hello. Hi, That's Stephen. Great. Hi, Stephen. Thanks for joining us. And let's see. Hey, Darren, it's Anastasia and John. We're listening, and John wants to say what an amazing mentor you are to him for rod wrapping and we are so excited how well your company is doing. Thank you. Love you, brother. Thank you so much. That, that makes I, you feel I, good to get it, that it, kind of, it right? Really, it really does. I will tell you that John, as a, as a really young man, I would guess maybe he was 14 or 15 years old. Yeah. Um, I had already moved on to my second rod building lathe. Yeah. And so my very first one was an old good broad uh, melamine wood uh, rock. Yeah. So I gave that to him. And to this day, he still has it. He may not use it at least very much. Maybe it has sentimental but, value but now, right? But he still has it. Yeah. That's I, great. I, I can't even tell you what that means to me. It means it, a lot, right? It does. Yeah. It I really mean, I had a kid come up to me who said, you know, I was on a boat when I was nine years old and wow. I got my captain's license. And wow. Then, you know, and I was like, wow, that's really great. You know, he goes, oh, you really got me excited about fishing. And that's I don't know crazy. how much of it is true or not, but it sure as hell made me feel good. That's wonderful. Yeah. That is Same wonderful. Same thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because there's so many distractions that young people can get nowadays. Oh, and if you man. can kind of steer them in a different direction and get them interested in something that's wholesome like this. Oh, for sure. Yeah, right? For sure. It, uh, it really is more than what most people even realize. There is so much more influence that you have when you're on the water uh, with... A bunch of kids or even one kid yeah you know just to be able to um to show them or to expose them to uh the joys of fishing that we get to experience so much throughout the year yeah right maybe it's the very first or only fishing trip that they've ever been on and i think it's 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 our obligation to help show those kids what they can have yeah right uh, as far as a hobby in fishing yeah They're, because like you know i mean it's brought you and i so many yeah. hours years oh. of fun and it's, friendships and you know yeah. i can go on and on yeah it, it's amazing what uh what i think you know i think that fishermen in general um especially today with the speed of information i think fishermen in general uh start to take it for granted that we have this resource, that we have the opportunity to be out there on the ocean. I do sometimes. Uh, and I do too. Yeah. You know, um, and so being able to stop for a moment and, and think, you know what, that kid is on his first half day trip. Yeah. And I've done a bazillion of these and I really don't even care to fish anymore. I'm just out here to be out on the ocean. Maybe take a moment and help that kid hook his first fish. <clears throat> I don't even care if it's a mackerel. I don't care what it is. Just help that kid feel the joy of winding in a fish. Yeah. Even if he does it all wrong. Yeah. Spinning reel, upside down, Who winding cares? it backwards. Who cares? Right. It doesn't matter. Right. So it's really, it's really uh, I think, like I said, our, our obligation as outdoorsmen, as fishermen, to really help kids and, and even adults yeah, that, sure. that are new to it. Yeah. Just show them how much... And, and why we love what we do. Absolutely. So. And I like that you put it as an obligation. Yeah. Like it's something that we have to do. We yeah. should do. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? As Absolutely. opposed to, that'd eh, be nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it would be nice. It would be nice. But, but if you feel obligated to yeah. share that with others, yeah, you it take makes the it more time. significant. Yeah. You take the time to do it. And, and I've, I've had the opportunity to share moments like that with, with people and, and, 
it's never a bad thing. Yeah. It, it never comes out bad. That's right. All right. Uh, Ducks to go says, I miss the whams. Tony Gonzalez. <laughs> Tony Gonzalez is, uh, by the way, uh, Tony and Janelle are out front and they're playing this for all the people that are waiting. So I want to <laughs> say, but Tony Gonzalez it works out front. But th this Tony Gonzalez is just another fan. How so funny. Before, when he would come on, I'd say, hey, by the way, Tony, I'll send some fresh fish out to the office for you. And this Tony's like, I'm not in the office. <laughs> you know? What are you drinking again? <laughs> you know? So anyway, Tony, it's good to see you, my friend. Uh, Rocket Dog, hey Darren and Phil, great to be able to make it to the must see TV, Jose. Nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what is this about tacos? Oh, are man. you nuts about oh, tacos? You know, I, I'm I'm a equal opportunity. You're not a big guy. You know, so I you know I just love to eat, but I will tell you that uh, in general, Mexican food. And especially Mexican food made of pork product. Oh, what? You're crazy? I'm all about, about it. Uh, I'm all about it. I'm right it. with I, you, man. You know, carnitas, carnitas or, or pastor or whatever you might have, I'm, I'm really into it. You know what's and funny? So, I, I, I almost, I should have done it. I should have. I brought three pork burritos that I homemade <laughs> for Tony and Janelle. And he walked in there oh, and he goes, Oh my gosh. Best you ever made. That's man. awesome. Best you ever made. That I love awesome. cooking and. Mexican food probably is my favorite cuisine. I, I it's right up there for me. Boy, I tell you what, not being able to eat fish, it kind of takes Asian food out of the picture because I can't even have anything with fish sauce. Yeah, and right. So a lot of the soup bases, you know, they use fish, dried fish to to flavor the the soup. I just don't. I'm not able to eat any What's of that. What's your ethnicity? So. Japanese. Oh, Japanese. Oh, yeah. So you you can't do the sashimi. No, or the sushi no, or none that. of it. Yeah, as a matter of fact, up until the time that I became allergic, yeah, I used to tear it up. I have had a large appetite my whole life. And so, you know, we would have family gatherings where the sashimi platter would hit the table and we would just destroy it because yeah. I loved it. I just did it the other night at Scott Bukert's birthday party. <laughs> His parents invited me in. Yeah. It got to the point where I couldn't go anymore, but it was so freaking so good, good, man. So good. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's to the point, my allergy has been with me so long, but now it's to the point where if I even taste something that has fish in it, yeah. based on how good it tastes, I can tell that there's fish in it. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my wife, she has an allergy to cats. And years ago, I, I thought she didn't like my cat. So, you know, she was always saying, put the cat out. But <laughs> so one time I went to a friend's house and the cat jumped on me and I was petting the cat and, you know, getting fur on me and everything. So I go home, give her a big hug, you know, hey, Ruth, what's up? And she starts immediately going and she goes, were you around a cat? And I go, no, of course not. <laughs> but she almost ended up in the emergency room. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I, these allergies are a serious thing. I found oh, yeah. that out. Yeah. My even wife though I tried to lie my way out of it. <laughs> My wife has plenty of stories of how, you know, I've accidentally had some fish, yeah. uh, tore into dinner too quickly without realizing what was actually being served. And, oh, wow. And so, you know, it's just one of those things. I mean, she married me, so she knew what she was getting into. <laughs> so, <laughs> Does she eat sashimi? And... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she loves fish. The, yeah. the, you know, the kids love eating fish. But I'm at the point now where even if we cook the fish in the house, I can't be there. Oh, wow. So I, I got to go somewhere else and hide. That's an easy way to so. get rid of you, right? Hey, <laughs> hey, put we'll on a, a halibut. <laughs> <laughs> get rid of yeah. dad for a few hours. Yeah. That's funny. So. so one of these guys, we might have somebody come in from the that's bride. That's great. That's uh, fantastic. That, there, that's, is that going to drive you crazy? That smell? Oh, no. No. We'll, we'll be okay. <laughs> we will be okay. All right. Very good. Well, um, I'll tell you, one thing that really impresses me about you is your dedication to this sport. And I can say, let me, let me go to a few more questions. Because sure. these people are nuts about you. Uh, They're like, I don't know why. Maso Manos about me. <laughs> you know? But when I have a good guess, they all start coming on. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lopez, fish tacos for you. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I love fish tacos, too. Um, hey, Darren. Um, quite off topic. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Regarding rod building, yes. but any suggestions for halibut fishing at the islands? I'm on the Pride tomorrow night, and it's been years fishing them locally. Thanks. Boy, I tell you what, it is awfully tough to target halibut 
no matter what trip you're going on, no matter which island you're going to be fishing. Um, when we like, were doing it, they have like pushing thirty today on the pride. That's, that's amazing, so crazy. Right? Yeah, that is so crazy. So when when I was doing it as a young man, we actually fished it with swim baits. Yeah, I mean that was a very very early swim bait time where we didn't even have the the swim baits as we know them today. Yeah, with the paddle tails and the whole bit, right. we had scampies and we had mojo twin tail grubs and things like that. But that's what we fished, and, yeah. and it was it was more fun to me. I didn't really care to fish bait. I'd rather get one on an artificial, and so that's what we did. But, but I will tell you that uh, halibut fishing, if you could get on a good bite, take advantage of it because it doesn't happen every day. Right, and that's why, you know, yeah. I'm excited. I hope Matt comes in. Matt's an old friend of mine That's great. Uh, for a long time. In fact, probably he was 14 when I took him wow. on a commercial boat out to Tanner Bank that I was running. So wow. he had his life, you know, precarious yeah. at that point. <laughs> but hopefully he'll walk in here. And he was a police officer for many, many years. And that's he was cool. on this trip. So I sent him a text and said, drop in and tell everybody how it was. That's We'd love fantastic. to hear all right, um, let's see here. Um, Gabriel de la Trinidad. Good evening, guys. Learning more about fishing. I have a Daiwa Sea Line S20SH. What so, size of rod do you recommend and line for that? You know, things are so different than when that reel was originally introduced. We used to fish things like 277 and 870s with a reel like that. We'd fish anchovies with light lines, small hooks, and a little split shot. In today's world, I think you could go with something like a, maybe a Graphiter 800 XLH. Yeah. Great choice. Uh, something that could be used at all of our local fishing. Yeah. Uh, 20, 25 pound rod. Um, I fish a lot of United Composite stuff, so I would probably say uh, CE 800 Mega. <clears throat> Uh, would be a good choice for that. But understanding, of course, that that drag system was so reliable. It, it's super reliable based on how it's built. Yeah. It's not a multi-disc drag, but it's a, a, a very um, durable, long-lasting, uh, very smooth single-disc drag in that reel. Yeah. Um, it's, it's good for tuna fishing. You can take it tuna fishing. For fly line, fly line baits, uh, you can take it to fish squid for yellows. Uh, and so I wouldn't hesitate. I wouldn't hesitate at all. You could fish that thing probably up to 30 pound on really? that reel. I would say so, yeah. 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 And with the, with the braided line today, you could do just about any combination. Yeah. So. Got some more questions. Sure. I was going to make one comment, though. You said you were always trying to get a bite on the artificial as opposed to bait. Me too in the surf, you know? And, <laughs> but I the other day, like... Yesterday, was it? I think it was yesterday. Eddie Leland? Do you know Eddie? I don't old know captain. Eddie. So Eddie and I and another guy, we all went fishing. I said, I'm over it. And I, <laughs> I fished bait. And finally caught some fish, actually. <laughs> Although Bob Gifford, who's an old-time friend of mine, too, grammar school. So wow. 55 That's years ago, fantastic. something like that. Yeah. He ended up with a treble hook all the way, buried the barb in his hand. He walks up to me, and he goes, um, you know how to fix this? And I go... Oh, you got that in there pretty good. Uh, go see Eddie. He'll help you. He's an old <laughs> captain. So I held it, and Eddie put the line. Have you yeah. ever seen Boop. Boop. Right Come out. right out. No yeah. problem. So seriously, it came out, and he started pretty profusely bleeding. Oh, yeah. And you know what I said? Hey, where are the worms? <laughs> I'm serious. I go, just, you know, you'll be fine. Because I've been digging these sandworms for an hour, you know. And oh, my <laughs> gosh. Like, Where'd those worms go? <laughs> Freaking crows come down and steal them. So... All right, uh, Scott Buchert, the guy that I went to, to, to his birthday party, he wants to know what acid wrap is, and is it good for big tuna? You know what? There's more good and more question, guys. Scott. That's a great question, as a yeah. matter of fact, and it's a very controversial question, good. as a matter of fact. So here's my take on it. Acid yeah. wrapping is where the guides will spiral from the top down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, there's about 8 million different techniques for setting up that guide train. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that the original intent was to stabilize the rod uh, under heavy load. Yeah. So guys that were long range fishing had these things spiral wrapped and, and so it kept the reel from rocking back and forth because when it's loaded, you don't want to have to fight the rod and reel while you're fighting the fish. I think that it's 
I think it's a good thing. Yeah. I think it's something that could definitely be beneficial. You would but, recommend doing it. Well, I, I, would, comes the I caveat. would say, okay, so, so I would say that if, if the choice is to acid wrap versus conventional wrap, for me personally, my rods are all conventionally wrapped. Yeah. I don't have an acid wrapped rod. With the rail and the way we fish it, right. I don't know that you'd necessarily have to. You don't have to have your rods acid wrapped anymore because everything is so compact and we're, we as rod builders are designing those rods so that you could fish them under your arm. You have a little bit closer, more intimate uh, posture with your rod and reel combination. And the reels are so small and narrow with heavy, heavy drag. Right. You don't have as much of that side motion. Here's the thing. If you do have it acid wrapped, um, you're definitely going to see the benefit. But next to the guy who has a rod that's conventionally wrapped, I don't know that it's going to be a difference between you getting your fish faster versus the guy that okay. has a conventionally yeah. built rod. Uh -huh. There's no, I don't think that there's a speed difference. I think there's a fatigue difference potentially. Yes. You may be more fresh at the end of a fight than the guy who is fighting his rod and reel if he doesn't have it set up properly. Yeah. You know, your, your, his forearms are going to be much tighter at the end of a fight than you would with the, with acid, the acid wrap, wrap just because you don't have that one issue that you have to fight. Yeah. With the new jigging rods that are being built, all of them are acid wrap for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's certainly uh, taken from the Asian fishing industry overseas, that whole jigging thing. And so maybe they've made it a standard to do acid wrapping, but um, acid wrapping for big fish, yes, it will work. No, it will not get, be a detriment to you, but is it an advantage? Probably not. Yeah. yeah. And that's a great question. So perfect because question. Scott called me ahead of time and he goes, I, I, that's a silly question. And I go, no, I don't know the answer to it. <laughs> Darren, I don't think, know the answer. I think it's a great question right. because it happens so much today. Yeah, exactly. Um, back to, oh no, this is uh, Diedrich Lape, I think. Darren, I, ha oh no, we did that. All right, I'm sorry. Is Big Tuna with deckhand wrap or reel seat? If you're fishing for Big Tuna, with a deck hand wrap, uh -huh. does this all make sense to uh -huh. you? Uh, do you want a real seat? I think is what Here's, Scott's asking again. Okay, so with respect to the deck hand style rod, what you're probably referring to is a cork tape or cord grip with a reel that's clamped on where the holes that you can position the reel wherever you want it want to. Right. Honestly, I, in all the years that I've been using deck hand rods, yeah, I get a big groove in the cork tape exactly where I put the reel every single time. Yeah. I don't move it around. I, f I find, I do the whole elbow to the hand yeah. thing and I position my reel. That hasn't that changed, way. the elbow that to the hand changed. thing. You know, everybody does it that way. And, and probably that started off 50 years ago. And oh, that's let just me how they you. did it. I was 12, I mean, I'm, I was 12 or 14 years old when Rick Effinger, the guy that owns Marine yeah. Del Rey, I can specifically remember him yeah. showing me that. So well, that's 156 years ago. 156. So there you have it. It's been <laughs> it's been around a long time. Yeah. But but the deckhand <laughs> rod. Um, here's the biggest challenge. There's a fine line between tightening up the reel to the point where it's going to crack the blank. Yeah. And where the reel is not tight enough and it's going to slip. And so, do you want to have to? Have that factor play into whether yeah, exactly. you're going to be successful with your your catch or not. Can you break the blank if you tighten it? Uh, I have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I I know personally that there can be blank failures because of clamping the reel. Yeah, you're stressing the rod so much already uh, with these heavier drag pressures uh, with the reels that are available today that I really believe in having a reel seat. Because what happens is you can actually clamp to the reel seat that's transferring that pressure down to the blank, but not over transferring the pressure. Yeah. So you can actually really robustly tighten that clamp to a reel seat without damage to the blank. Really? That can also be positioned within that cork tape or cord handle 
uh, so that you still get the benefit of having the cord or having cork tape or, or X wrap or whatever. If your design uh, flavor is to have a Turk's head on your rod, you can still have a Turk's head on your rod. Do and all so, that stuff. Right, you yeah. can still have it look that, that way. But if you're gonna fish big fish, I mean intentionally fish those big, big fish with these rods, or it really pen. would be a benefit to have a real seat. Okay. It, it's just better. Yeah, so. perfect. All right, uh, let's see, who do we have next? We have um, uh, N6 Yuen. I am a beginning rod builder since 1973. That's not a beginning. <laughs> and, and still learning. I love a guy like That's that. That's wonderful. Love a guy like that, that right? That is wonderful. Open mind. Uh, built my first Sabre 196.7 rod to throw anchovies that yellowtail at Rocky Point. Oh, who doesn't remember fishing oh, yeah. a 196.7 to cast a chove, right? Especially around here, yeah, fishing right. Rocky Point with an anchovy right. to or, catch a yellow. Or catching calico bass on them. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I used to have so many, so much fun with that broad blank. I love that one. Gabriel de la Trinidad, thanks for your help. He's thanking you Thank very much. Butch is. Uh-oh. You know Butch, don't Cappy. you? <laughs> Let's see if I can actually read this. I need an acid wrap spinner. Can you build me one? <laughs> Butch is putting his order in. All Boy, right, I man. tell you what, that's complicated. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, and Scott Buecher, just clarifying, he was talking about fishing 70 plus pound tuna. You were yeah. talking about big yeah. fish. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Marcel Sampaga. Ha uh -huh. ha ha. Butch Diaz. Let's see. Darren. As a strategic <laughs> comeback answer, did you? Have, Boy, I tell you what, pretty strategic. Yeah, I, I yeah. think uh, I think that would be complicated, but it can be done. We can do it. All right, Butch, you got that. Put your yeah. order in right now. <laughs> Scott wants to know what the best guides are. You know. Boy, I like uh, that's a. I can answer that. I like uh, guides that are like five foot ten and blonde, long hair. You know. You know. Those that, are oh, those, normally really good guides. I just you kidding. know that absolutely. <laughs> Your turn. Your turn. <laughs> you know that's uh that's one of those things. It it's just like uh, buying a Chevrolet or a Ford. Oh really? Um, all the guides. If if performance is the issue. All of the guides today have the same basic performance characteristics as the next. Yeah. And so in today's market here in Southern California, we do a lot with both Fuji and Alps. Yeah. Um, there are other guide manufacturers out there. There are other guide manufacturers that are equally as good in basic performance. I personally feel like uh, price is an issue. I think that because you have equivalent performance with both the Alps and the Fuji, yeah. is the Fuji going to provide any additional benefit to the cost that you end up paying? Yes. That's, that remains to be seen. You know, the, the, guide tech, the guide ring technology that Fuji uses is definitely significant, the investment that they make in developing their new stuff. Yeah. But... Um, I personally uh, prefer the Alps product, and in particular the Titanium Alps, be and and not because they're light. Everybody gets the misconception that because Titanium is light, that's what you go for. It's not because it's light. As a matter of fact, I tell everybody if you need a light rod, because this is a very common co conversation that happens. If you need a light rod in order to go out there and fish, seriously, go golfing. <laughs> go golfing because for the guys that are fishing these big bluefin for instance yeah they're fishing with rods that are heavy they're heavy in weight the reels are heavy in weight they're carrying 700 yards of braided line with them there's nothing that a guide is going to do to help the overall package so you can't look at it from that perspective titanium however is absolutely corrosion resistant you cannot get one to corrode. And so on my own personal rods, because I'm lending them out all the time, honestly, I mean- Oh, I, perfect, I, got, I know who to turn yeah, to. Yeah, you know, you yeah. need something that uh, you need to go fishing, you let me know and, yeah. and you'll have it to fish with. <laughs> but I lend them out so much, they get sun beaten no, and, sure. and salt spray all the time. Nobody takes care of your rods as good as you yeah, take them, and, so sometimes. And, and I don't fault anybody for right. that, you know, because I'm the one offering it to you sure. to go out there and catch the fish of a lifetime. Sure. And so, but my rods uh, have the titanium guides because literally 
you could have all the finish off the blank, and those guides are going to look just as good as That's they did fantastic. the very first day. Yeah. It, 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 for me, it's worth are the money. Are they way more expensive? I would say that... Twice as much? I would or? say they're twice as yeah. much. Um, but when you look at the overall cost of the build, it really doesn't equate to a significant bump in, in price. Yeah. You know, tackle is so expensive today. And so even... Everything with, is. Everything right? is. How and about so the supply chain? Is that Supply you up chain has been, has been good. Oh, uh, good. I, I would say that over the last six months, it's kind of recovered. Good. I think, I think that the one year... Leading up to the six month mark, it was really bad. Yeah. And then it started to get healed because our manufacturers were getting more used to the delivery schedule. Yeah. They were relying more on air freight and getting stuff over here. So, so as far as my business is concerned, where I'm here to support the professional rod builders, yeah. my supply to them has been consistent. Uh, we've had small hiccups. And we do have manufacturers that, that aren't able to deliver as quickly as we might want them, but it's been okay. It's That's been good. good so. That's good. Um, let me go for it. You you're, you got so many fans here. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'll but tell you what, we have I'll such help. a great audience because we they do. participate and they keep this going. And That's man, cool. That's <laughs> awesome. so, so great. 540 Slinger. That's Jeff. What type of artificial bait do you like, Darren? Do you prefer to fish plastics, iron, stick bait, what do you like? You know, I am I am absolutely not a stick bait guy. Not that I wouldn't want to fish it, but I just, I just don't. Um, I don't really like the idea of a calico bass shaking its head and impaling me with multiple hooks on one bait right. with it still hooked on the fish. Yeah, right. So I'm not a big stick bait guy, but um, I, I love artificials and, and I have a trip down to Cedros this year, uh, and when I go down there, I, I absolutely love fish and plastic, and in particular the slug. Yeah, uh, it, it's just there's just nothing like it, and so I love that. I'm a huge surface iron guy. Yeah. I love what they do. Yeah, they're awesome. Uh, I, I I'm excited about that event that's coming. Are up. you coming? You know what? I'm I'm gonna miss it because I'm flying home from Puerto Vallarta. Oh, Puerto shoot. Vallarta that day. Yeah. And so I won't be able to make it down there. But we'll I, do I another just one. love the fact that you guys are doing that because it helps less experienced anglers get around guys that know what they're doing and uh, helps them to learn how to actually do it safely. Yeah. And my major preoccupation, because you know, I told Jeff and we were just instantly on the same wavelength. My major thing was I don't want some guy walking in there who doesn't know what he's doing to feel bad. Right. I want them welcomed in, and here's how you... Absolutely. Because we all have to start somewhere. Jeff, right on the same. Right on the same. That, so, that is super cool. Yeah, and so I mean, intermediate, beginner, expert. There's absolutely. Be so good. I, next one, you'll have to make yeah, the next I'd one. Yeah, I'd love to be there. Yeah. Uh, Brandon wants to know, and Brandon, you asked a question about the halibut a second ago. Hopefully, my friend Matt's going to walk yeah. in here. He's on the t uh, on the pride, and he'll have some answers for you. So, ultimate question: What do you mean, ultimate question? You don't have to. You can keep asking questions all night, as much as you want. Will we see the A word this year? <laughs> your prediction: <laughs> What is your true opinion? Okay. On albacore showing up. Yeah, don't give okay. me, I don't e want to get your false opinion. Give Every me your time one. I watch an episode of your show and you guys bring up the A word, I'm always screaming at the at the screen yeah. with my opinion. So here goes. Oh, really? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Does it involve any expletives about me? Uh, no. Just a few, maybe. At home, maybe. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> but but you know what? I think the 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 albacore uh, migration is gonna start to happen right i absolutely believe that i i believe that we have the forage that they want to eat uh anchovy. growing up growing up they love to eat anchovy yeah and they don't love to eat as much the bigger sardine and so knowing that the forage has uh turned in the right direction uh knowing that we have the right temperatures i think we're pointed at having albacore this year? This year. Yeah. This year. I yeah. believe that we're going to see albacore in the counts. A man however, that thinks like me. Yeah, uh-oh. However. Here comes the caveat. Here's the thing. Yeah. I would not expect to see thousands and thousands and thousands of albacore in the count. Yeah, I don't think so This either. stuff, it doesn't turn on like a light switch. 
I've seen it before in all those years I was working at the store and, and afterwards being a, an avid fisherman that loved to catch those things. When it's to happen, it's going to be maybe a couple hundred throughout the season. There you go. With all those boats on the water, there might be a couple hundred. Right. And I wouldn't expect it to be one boat getting a hundred of those. Yeah. It's going to be sprinkling, but you're going to start seeing them. Maybe the boat's going to see them out on the water, splashing around, but not catch them. But let me tell you something. And this Look is right at these people. Listen, tell them. This is something that I learned from a very good friend of mine. You tie in the amount of rain, precipitation, and the, the uh, temperatures of the water to the albacore season. If we get great amounts of rain this winter, which La Nina traditionally produces, next year will be the, the year for the albacore. The big albacore year. Yeah. All right, Brandon, there you have okay. it. Okay, I, I hope that helps. Have you seen any of Chef Jason's uh, re recipes on our I have show? not. He's driving to Newport Beach and he said hello. Great. And so he's on his way there. Chef Jason is a new addition. In fact, so we're doing the casting contest. Yes. On May the 15th, which is right. a Sunday in the morning at the Casting Pond at Recreation Park in Long Beach. And then Jason has his restaurant five minutes away. That's great. So the after party. Oh, my gosh. Man. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah, maybe the after however, party until 2 in the morning. You can be However, there. Yeah. I couldn't eat very much of it. Because uh, I'm allergic to fish. That's so. true, but he's got chicken wings and that's, Dodger oh. dogs. He's got the real Don't Dodger dogs. Don't you threaten me with a good time. <laughs> Dodger dogs and chicken wings sounds awfully yeah, good. Right? So, yeah. yeah. He does fish, but not all the time. All right, let's see. Uh, Rocket Dog. Darren, yes, do you sir. believe that there has been a big growth in rod builders now versus five years ago? I, or has social media... Help the small guys wrapping in their garage, get their names, builds out there easier. Which is here's it? here's is the it thing. a mirage or is I believe, uh, and you guys can agree with me or not, or maybe you aren't close enough to it or not, but I believe that Sam Delatore's in investment in the Fred Hall show, I believe it was 2018, so maybe four years ago. I believe that was the start. He is responsible for the growth in custom rod building. Sam in De La Torre? Sam De La Torre. How much did he pay you to say that? He didn't pay me very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, he is a top I, one. I'll tell you what. He is, um, <laughs> he is so invested in the growth of custom rod building. I mean, if you've been to his store, you know how much real estate on the floor he dedicates to custom rods. Yeah. The volume of blanks that he has, the amount yeah. of, of handle building components, the amount of cord and twine that he invests in every month. I mean, seriously, he has an extraordinary uh, offering for custom rod builders on a retail level. Yeah. That is not to take away from any of the other stores that also supply custom rod building components. Okay, yeah. One of the greatest stores uh, around for custom rod building is both Bob Sands and the Longfin. They have always supported custom rod building, uh -huh. but their, their volume of these things, these elements that go into custom rods, and, and I have to say, maybe even the expertise within the store to help somebody with their choices for custom rod building, I don't think they're as strong as what Sam has put in place there. He yeah. has on-site rod building, he has the components, he has a few uh, uh, sales guys there that are experienced rod builders that can help uh, somebody get through their initial first purchase of rod building elements. So yes. I would say that that investment that he made four years ago off the growth in custom rod building and my feeling is that we need to support that and so over those same amount of years we started the custom rod building competition the custom rod depot at the shows where we bring in more and more uh, manufacturers so guys can go and speak directly to a representative of Fuji guides of Alps gui uh, guides and real seats and really uh, start to 
educate themselves in person and not just rely on YouTube. Yeah, good idea. So. The questions are coming in. Oh, the man. viewership is up. Boy. You're going to have to come back okay. every week from now on. Let me <laughs> tell you. All right, Gwen, uh, or N6 Gwen, what is the difference between a spinning reel rod blank and a conventional rod blank? You know what? It's, it's funny. That question, if I'm not mistaken, has come up in the past, and I don't know if it was the same person. Uh -huh. Spinning rod blanks and casting rod blanks in general are exactly the same. Really? For saltwater purposes, we'll use the exact same rod blank and ask the buyer or the, the user, the customer, um, how they're going to use the rod. And so we'll set it up differently. We'll use a different guide spacing and guide train. We might even change the type of handle configuration and lengths of rear grips versus foregrips, that kind of thing will all play into setting up a spinning rod. Yeah. Conventional style would, of course, be completely different and, and opposite from uh, a spinning build. So for our saltwater fishing, they're the same. Yeah. Freshwater guys uh, might <laughs> choose uh, to use a more parabolic rod for their spinning rod use. Uh, or a lighter tipped rod for their spinning rod use, say it's going to be a, a drop shot rod or, or they're throwing some or something, they might use a little bit different rod. And so we would call that maybe a spinning rod blank. Gotcha. But it can be built either way. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Okay, perfect. Uh, Jason Lawler wants to know about the halibut. Jason, hang on. Hopefully Matt will come in here. If he doesn't, uh, we're going to lie like hell about okay. what to use. Yeah. Right? yeah. Dropper loop, really working effectively. <laughs> Rocket dog. Darren, do you believe that there has been a... Oh, no, I just read you. Yeah, we one. did that one. No. <laughs> uh, we got another believer. Okay, let's see. Rocket dog got... Uh, okay. Let's see. OC Tuna Club Fishing ah, Channel. Yes, sir. Do you sir. know these guys? Yes. Do you watch them? Of course. I, have I a, fish I, with I them. I will start. I promise. And <laughs> thank you guys for coming in here and asking a question. Darren can only... Pick one for lunch. Okay, RP Bacon Burger or RP Barbecue. Oh, wait. Oh. He hasn't had the RP oh, BBQ yet. Oh, my goodness. I know how he can fix that. Ha, ha, oh, ha. Is this man. guy wanting to go on the Royal Polaris he's trying to. He's trying to get me to go on a, a very important trip. And so, you know, we're. I'm trying to work it out. What's his right name, now. by the way? That's Doug. Doug, Doug. in Noe. All right. Oh, okay. Very yeah. good. Yeah. So, uh, Doug is trying to get me on that trip. I will tell you that uh, that barbecue, unlike most every other barbecue on the planet, yeah. happens at 2 a.m. What? On the deck of the Royal Polaris. What? Yeah. That's I awesome. mean, charcoal briquettes, the whole 2 thing. 2 a.m.? 2 a.m. Who does because that? The crew? Or? No. The, These the guys. anglers. Yeah, they're, they're out there and they're um And they're the crew, doing, everybody's cool with that? They don't set oh, fire yeah. to the boat or anything Don't usually? set fire to the boat. They have the uh, deck hose handy, oh, so good. just yeah. in case. Yeah. But uh, but they they do an extraordinary deal with that because they're doing this jig fishing at night for yeah. bluefin, and so everybody gets hungry. They're up late. That's great. They do barbecue, and from what I understand, it is absolutely phenomenal. Well, that sounds awesome. But I still love the bacon burger. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, truth be told, I ended up having two bacon burgers for lunch one day and the chef almost wouldn't make me the second one because oh he God. couldn't believe that I was going to eat it. Oh my God. We knocked it out, Phil. That's I'll what, make you proud. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Darren. It reminds me, you know, I was a cat, uh, went to Catholic school, so we started this thing we call pig night. So during Lent, you can't have meat on Friday. Right. So we'd fire the barbecue go up at 11 o'clock oh with the ribs <laughs> and at 12.01, <laughs> When it turned to Saturday, oh, we'd man, have this pig that's night. That's fantastic. Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> and show OC Tuna Club channel, fishing channel, some love. Go over there and watch those guys. Yeah, we thank we, you for visiting us, some, Doug. They've got some great uh, long range videos. Oh that man! They posted. All right, yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see, Brandon, good one, OC Tuna. Hey, can we? Heck hey, everybody, yeah. hang on. Come on in, Matt. Hey, hey, Do you know Darren? I, you know, I. Don't step on those uh, cords. We know each other through David's show. Yes. Around. Yes. Come on in here where everybody can yeah. see you. Great to see All right. you. And then, so here's your microphone right here, but don't kiss oh, me. Here, I'll get behind you. Is that okay? <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Well, you got to talk into this thing. Here, uh -huh. here, wait a minute. Let me take this off. You'll be I'll just pass it back and forth. Right? <laughs> you know, everything that happened today is a secret. You know that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, let's we keep it between us. We don't want to know where, okay? but we got a bunch of people want to know how. Oh, like, okay. what are you yeah. fishing with? Oh, how was fishing? Fishing was really good. I mean, it was fantastic. I had a game fish out there of all kinds, white sea bass, yellowtail, nice. big yellowtail. And halibut fish. And a lot of halibut. Yeah, yeah. good halibut bite. Um, halibut were mostly on sardines. Really? sardines, yeah. yeah, and a reverse dropper loop. You know, 25-pound test, 30-pound test. Can you guys hear this guy? I hope so. Get it to Snuggle the, up to me a little more. Oh. Get, it, get it to the bottom and uh, just hang on. I mean, it was really good. Uh, sea bass. All acid, um, lead heads, sliding egg sinkers, just depends on the current as far as what size. Yeah. I think this morning we were using quarter ounce, this afternoon we were using like a three quarter an ounce, something like that. Uh -huh. And then the yellowtail are up running around, so... Um, Man, what a trip! Yeah, it That's could be great. surface iron, Yeah. Um, <clears throat> could be live sardine, could be squid on a dropper loop, Yeah. could be a yo-yo jig. Yeah. So you Man. Kinda have to, if you're going on the pride, you're going to have to be prepared for all of that and we still have two spots open on our july 5th trip that's not going to last that's very great. long but and as long as this game fish is biting he's the captain's committed to that he's not fishing rockfish so don't yeah. come out thinking you're fishing bottom grabbers how's the crew how's the pride you what, know what, what do you have to great. say i thought it was nice yeah they, they ran a good operation uh sean fished really hard um and his goal was to get those game fish yeah so um good trip you know a little bumpy on the way out last night but yeah it, it, as the day went on, everything got better. Um, actually, on the lee and even on the backside um, of the Unknown Islands, um, <laughs> it got really warm. In, in Why don't you just say it? You guys went down to the Coronado Island. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Made that long Chopa ride. Island. Yeah, right. Chopa <laughs> Island. Right. So yeah. it was really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Good. It, the, the, and so these guys, that you've answered their question. They're all, uh, Brandon is saying thank you so much. He really appreciates it. But Mike, I have the question. Uh-huh. Am I eating halibut tonight or not? Well, I did get one, but I got Oh, one. you got too many other people come in. You see? I do. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, let me tell you. Oh. But I have okay. you over dinner. I'm only getting it. Yeah, well you invited me the other I day. Did and get I did get one. I was you did? Was yeah. it a big one? No, nah, like ten pounds. That's cool. Yeah. They yeah. were they were anywhere from ten to maybe like eighteen today, but they've had some over thirty. Yeah. It's just luck of the draw. That boat is quiet, isn't it? It is quiet. I didn't even hear it pull in here, did you? No. Yeah. It's quiet. Yeah. yeah. But uh, things are looking up. All right. Well, I mean, on that local. So. That's old school fishing, man. I, I haven't heard it that good in yeah, right? a long yeah. time That's good. with that variety. It was exciting. That's listen, so cool. Listening to the captain getting us ready last night and today, it was really exciting. And, and to have that kind of fishery right here, you know, fairly close. And, yeah. Um, to yeah, see, what, it's only know, 100 miles to the right, Coronado Joe Islands. Yeah. <laughs> to see those, <laughs> all three of those game fish, especially the halibut, you yeah. know, um, it was awesome. That's great. It was really cool. Well, great time. I would keep Matt along uh, here for a lot longer and pick his brain, but since he's got no halibut for me, get the hell out of here. Right. Hey, <laughs> it's good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah. Darren's more interesting. Ah, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, not Matt, even thank close. you. Right. Appreciate all right, it. Take so care. reverse dropper loop is really the big key. Uh, oh. Reverse dropper loop for halibut. Yeah. And we also fish a regular dropper loop for the yellows and the sea bass. Yeah. But you can fish them multiple ways. Yeah. The crew will help the guys get set up. Okay. But uh, bring some fluoro. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty. You should have like 30, 25, 30. 25, 30 fluoro. Got it. Wow. All right. Matt, good to see you. See you guys. Thank you. Thanks, man. Hey, we got it That's right awesome. off that. Perfect. Right. Guy Perfect. walks off the boat. <laughs> lies like hell about where he fished. We got no information. We know exactly no. where he fished. He fished Coronados. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I forgot to ask him if they fished Middle Grounds or South yeah. Island. Yeah. I blew that. All right. Yeah, I don't blame these guys for trying to keep a lid on it. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't bother me. All right. Let's go back to this for a second. Uh, they're really thrilled with that report. Jeff wants to know, is Darren familiar with the old Bob's Sporting Good custom wraps, such as the San Diego Special? And the special 77. Yes. Ooh. As a matter of fact, yeah. I, I didn't grow up uh, knowing those special blanks, but just recently through a very good friend of mine, Pat Mayer, who was one of the rod builders out there, yeah. uh, he's kind of educated sure. me about that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we just had one 
uh, SD special come through the door the other day uh -huh. uh, as a as a uh, sample rod for me to re wrap a new rod for yeah. that customer. And I said, do you know what this is? And it had the Bob Sporting Goods riding on the little uh, signature bay there. And and I said, dude, this is this is kind of cool. Yeah. You know, do you know what you have? He said, yeah. It, it, I don't fish it very much, and I'm like, man, that's that's really something for the collection. That that's yeah, really, really right. Cool. Um, I can tell you that through the process of trying to get those blanks again, um, there's some new ones that are going to be coming out that are awfully close. Really? Awfully close. That's I great. Mean, uh, and they will be readily available. And so um, we'll see. We'll see how long that takes for them to get that out. But there is. Uh, replacement for the SD special coming. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, we didn't ask Matt this question, but do you like fishing the trap rig when you fish halibut? You I don't think they I, were using it. I, or he would have mentioned it, Brandon. We yeah, we we used to fish that in the yeah. Santa Monica Bay a long, long time uh, ago. The treble hook or, with the small treble hook. Yeah. And honestly, I never did any good with it. Yeah, I, I, don't I was remember not, catching a yeah, halibut that way. I was not one of those that really I think it embraced screws that. the way your bait swims. I think so. Right? Yeah. Because you, where do you put it? In the yeah. tail of the yeah. bait leg, and then it's like it's just it doesn't look dragging natural. there. You know? Yeah. So. Kenji, Kenji said, can't wait for my rod by Darren, 310 Rodworks, for the 10-day trip on the Royal Polaris with OC Tuna Club this year. <laughs> i got to hook up with these OC Tuna Oh, guys. they're good people. Yeah. They're good people. And I hope great they to show up with. to this event. i tell you what. Um, they sound like the kind of guys that would help novice a absolutely. anglers. And, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, Kenji brought up the rod that, that I'm building for yeah. him, and, and uh, a lot of the guys have gotten, become familiar with the rod blanks that are exclusive to 310 Rodworks. And, oh, and, so you have and exclusivity one, on some? Yeah. Yeah, just, just a few, not a lot. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, it's stuff that I prefer to fish with. And so um, Randy over at United Composites, right. because they're manufacturing right there in Huntington Beach, you know, he doesn't get his stuff from anywhere but a box and a roll of raw material. Yeah. And so he's making the blanks right there. He helped me design uh, what I call the Deviant. And the Deviant is the ultimate big bait rail rod blank. Why did you um, call it the Deviant, by the way? You know what? It kind of just follows the pattern of all his other rail rod okay. blanks. And so we just kind of called it the Deviant. It was, yeah. a, it was a clear departure from every other unlimited class rod blank yeah um, and so we had that designed uh, and it's been it's gotten to me it's gotten really good you know we're coming up on our hundredth hundred uh rod blank that we've sold that's and, great and so uh as a as a non rod manufacturer to be able to get through that much production and get them sold out there and uh, have them fished and, and used to catch some giants. Oh, you gotta um, be stoked. Beyond. It is, it is a fantastic feeling to know that guys trust that rod to be the right rod. Yeah. Um, and, and we're talking, you know, different boats down out of San Diego have them as their kite rods and their ro boat rods. Uh, we put a few of them on the rods, uh, boats down there in Puerto Vallarta for their big fish fishing. Um, and one of the people who honestly uh, helped me to develop the concept for it uh, was Mark Fujimoto, who oh. was the first person to, to respond about the ice cream. Yeah, okay. Uh, he was there, another friend of mine, Tommy Tamanaha, and one of your one of your guest, previous guests, David Choate. Yeah, um, that was a funny we, one, oh, actually. Oh, that was funny. Yeah, that did you hilarious. hear that whole thing about oh, the yeah. Panamanian? Yeah. Yeah, and he the, didn't hold back on that. The, the barge or the party barge <laughs> I remember seeing it, but I didn't remember him going <laughs> on. I don't know why I didn't get invited. Yeah. You know, what the hell? But she, you know, this guy walks in, no halibut for me. I don't go to the party thing. No. Hey. I'm always like the red haired stepchild. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. So, so David really uh, helped to refine what we were doing with yeah. that rod. And, and he got literally got the first fish on the Deviant. Oh, really? Uh, it was, hundred, I think, a 170 pounder. He said it really didn't stand a chance. It, it was just That's awesome. so much rod that the fish basically came right to the boat. And coming from him. Yeah. He's I mean, I, he, I trust his opinion <laughs> Me too. about what to build as far as a big 
big fish rod. Yeah. And so, so I, over all these years, I've relied on him so much as a, as a big fish fishing mentor. Uh, he was part of the pro staff when I was at Seeker, uh, relied heavily on his opinion about the direction of the product line, yeah. the programs that we were doing. Uh, and so we've been around each other so much and, and I really, really appreciate him. Mark is another one. Mark, from the time I opened 310 Rodworks to now, has helped me so much as far as how to develop the brands that we have uh, in our stable. Uh -huh. you know, we have Sato uh, Custom Tackle, which has the Sato Crimp system uh, and the line winders. Uh, we have the E4 grips. We have uh, Swifty Manufacturing, which is the, the Spectra line washing. And for anybody who uses Spectra, seriously, if you guys don't mind having funky smelling Spectra, Go ahead. That's cool. Yeah. But this spectral washing system is really designed so that you can pull the line off the reel, wash it, uh, and, and then just leave it out and let it dry, wind it back onto your reel. Wow. While the line is off, you can actually service your spool, put a little bit of That's carnauba wax idea. on yeah. it, clean it up. I, in fact, I just uh, serviced my Mac 16. And for the first time in all the different reels that I've been using all this time, first time I had a small spot of corrosion and I'm glad I got it right away. Yeah. And so uh, it's an it's a opportunity to pull the line off, wash it, check the spool, service the spool, get the line back onto the reel, all with product that we produce. The line winder, the Swifty kit, uh, just everything. Preventative you, maintenance, right, right? Yeah. Right. And it's all do it yourself. You don't have to take that's it to great. a shop to Yeah, do that's it. really so. great. That sounds good. Uh, Jeff says, good to see Kenji in the yeah. chat. Kenji's a good guy. So <laughs> Mark's back. Fujimoto. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, I know. Huh? Here we go. <laughs> Mark, hold back. What are you recommending for anchovy sticks? Are there any new... Blank designs out there. Boy. Good question, you know, because what I, if we go into a I, La Nina? I Mark's right, you. and all we have for bait is anchovies. I'll tell you what, you know, so much tackle tech has changed uh, over the years. Um, one of the things that we just never would have used 30 years ago is an all graphite rod. So, so much has gone that direction that it has created a condition within the action of the rod that I call a very tight tip. Uh -huh. Very tight, meaning even if it's a light tip, it's still very responsive, overly responsive. What we used to fish with was a 196.7, a 270, 870. Right. 870 was the heavy rod. Yeah, 870. Right? So uh, in those rods and in all glass, um, all glass layups, the tips are often much softer, yes. less responsive to allow that anchovy to get away from the boat yeah, without right. ripping the hook out of it and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. We have just come up with and adding to our uh, stable of, of blanks, uh, a new composite from United Composites uh, that <clears throat> is going to be the ultimate big fish, light line, small hook rod. Big fish, yeah. Big light fish, line, light line, small hook, small hook right. Right. I like it. So as as, as your, your viewers are aware, there's so much talk about how these bluefin want to bite a small hook on lighter line. Yeah. The same condition is going to be the be present for albacore when they come back. So what they're we coming created, back this year. What do you I, mean when I, they come back? You know, I, I don't know if we're talking about like May or June or July. You know, so. We'll see. Oh, but fine. But when they finally get here, yeah. uh, they're, <laughs> our, our anglers are not going to be well equipped because their tackle isn't quite right for that small bait fishing. Yeah. Come back, coming back to the bluefin bite that's on the, the light line, small circle hooks, if you've been watching how that really takes place, those small circle hooks... They require a rod that's going to be a little bit more forgiving. Right. Uh, but still, once that hook is set, you want to be able to move the fish. You, you right. don't want that rod to just bend through to the butt cap. Correct. So 
we've come up with some blank options uh, in our CP line. Um, they're seven foot six rods. They have glass running from butt to tip, but their uh, shutoff points were created by putting different kinds of material in place. Yeah. And so we have, we have a CP76L. Uh, we're actually kind of refining that, that uh, design right now, but that CP76L is gonna be designed for fishing 15 and 20, but the, with the power, once it's loaded, to fish 40. And so you're really not going to be at the significant disadvantage as you might be right now yeah. based on the rods that are available yeah. today. So I think that, that we have something really cool coming. It sounds There's like it. There's also an M, which is going to be equivalent, kind of kind of situated between an 870 and a 670, but in a composite construction. And so way more backbone, yeah. but nice, softish tip oh that's so, great yeah. perfect and we are gonna i mean if this happens this la nina we end up with choby for bait and yeah. albacore we're gonna have to switch up our gear a little bit yeah. right i i think that guys uh, need to be aware that with that change their gear is going to also have to change all right mark great question we thought you, <laughs> i thought you were going to screw with uh, jaron again I'm, I'm a little disappointed but not too much tony gonzalez says what is your opinion of the calstar gx8 for fishing the chovy. Okay, so uh, I have very limited exposure to that GX8, but what I do remember and what I know about that that rod, just as I was saying with the all graphite rods, that rod seems to have a much more responsive tip. Mm -hmm. And so, do I think it's going to be a great anchovy rod? No, not necessarily a fly line anchovy rod. What it's going to be good for is those anchovy bites where you need a rubber core sink or you're adding some weight to it. And so you need a little bit more rod to get right. it out there. Right. And you're defeating the need for uh, unresponsive tip by putting a giant weight right in line with the hook. That weight negates the need to have a softish tip. Yeah, right. So, you know, in the, in the right conditions, I think it could be good. Um, as far as fly bank, it is absolutely not a fly line bank yeah. blank for small baits. You, know, you can fly line a sardine with anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, <they're laughs> or you, you should be able to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the time I fished albacore, I, I, I fly lined sometimes, but most of the time I was sinker fishing. Were yeah. you? I, I did a lot of split shot fishing. Yeah, right. Lots of split yeah. shot fishing. So, you know, that, that with, uh, along with uh, tying up with a one ounce chrome Torpedo sinker. Yeah, you remember that? <laughs> yeah. And a number four, 94, 150 Mustad hook. Absolutely. You know, I mean, that that was just kind of standard issue. Pat Con Do you remember Pat Conklin? Oh, yeah. All uh -huh. right. Pat was in the stern of the, oh, I forget what boat, the Prowl or the Search, I was fishing with him. And I was stoked that I was fishing with him. And he had 60 pound, I think, oh, with man. a big hook and an eight ounce torpedo. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, what the F are you doing? And he's like... <laughs> Man, when they yell hookup, I just drop this thing. And oh, I go, yeah. really? Does it work? He goes, well, if it doesn't, I don't catch them. Like, I don't <laughs> care. So, it worked. He yeah. was getting them, you know? Yeah. It's funny how that whole albacore thing is going to be such a new... It's so weird that so many people have never seen those things. Yeah. And, you know, there's a whole new generation... Yeah, that are going to find that really fun. You know, I, I think uh, with respect to albacore fishing, the, the greatest uh, advancement... <laughs> Uh, for our albacore fishery is the use of swim baits. Yeah. We have so many different swim baits you, now. You know have, they're going to bite that. Oh, they're going to bite the heck out of yeah, that on the stuff. Slide. You, better, you better have your slide gear ready. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what, tell, tell everybody what the slide is. Maybe you know, they don't know. I, I tell you what, w over the last five years at least, we have kind of gotten away from trolling as a, as a means yeah, right? to locate fish. That is almost paramount to albacore fishing. Yeah. And so um, when you get bit on the troll, there's four guys that are supposed to be standing right next to their rod. Yeah. So if one gets bit, three, pull the other jigs in, and you're, you're standing aside. If you're not on the trolling team, you're standing aside with either a sinker rig yeah. uh, with a pin, bait pinned on it for fishing the slide or a swim bait. Yeah. We used to do it with mojos at the time, yeah. blue and white. Blue and pearl white mojo. Is that Butch Chapman, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Butch. So Great guy. twin tail grubs on a scampy style white head, flip it off the side, and the fish would come up and eat it. 
Well, that's after you get a jig strike. Yeah. You, you get bit on the troll, boat pulls out of gear, it's still sliding, you flip your swim bait out there and let it go back and you will feel them annihilate that. Yeah, thing. it's so cool, it right? It's so much fun. There's so nothing much better. Fun. And if you're proficient at it, honestly, you'll be one of the top anglers on the boat. Yeah. For sure. You for know, sure. remember that whole, and now that you've mentioned that trolling and, you know, you're trolling along and then you'll hear the guy come on the PA and say, throw bait. Throw and bait. And then you, yeah, right? <laughs> and then you, the anticipation <laughs> starts right there. Oh, yeah. You know, you're waiting for somebody to yell hook them. So the guy's throwing bait and then all of a sudden, you know, I, you I, double jig strike or whatever. I'll tell you what, the one thing that gets me about that whole scenario is the guys that are fishing the slide are never fighting for a bait at the at the hand well, at yeah, the bait tank. Right. And so they're already fishing before they even get to the bait tank. Yeah. So you avoid all that mess. Yes. All that confusion that happens. There's a at lot the of confusion tank. up oh, there, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because everybody's gotta be the first one in. Yeah. Because that bait gets bit. Yeah. So Anyway, so with, with the fish in the slide, I, I think you have to have uh, some uh, finesse to it. You have to absolutely. know what you're doing, but it is super productive. Yeah, absolutely. All right, the questions just keep okay. coming. I'm loving Sorry. you guys. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm loving every bit of this. All right, let's see. Uh, Mark Fujimo. Mark said, uh, I think he was talking about, I said, he says, that happens all too often at the shop. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta come down there and watch this one of these days. Uh, Jeff, 540 Slingers. I've always heard about fishing the mega baits on the slide. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what's, what's odd is that was probably one of the first jigs that I fished on the slide that was as productive as it really was, and we never changed the hooks. We always just use the factory hooks on yeah. those things. And it worked. never needed to change them out, yeah. unlike today. Brandon says, uh, Darren, are you shocked? Are you shocked uh, that the cedar plug is still in use today for our trolling team with all of this new technology? It's pretty crazy. A darn piece of wood is still reliable. Here's the thing about the dang cedar plug. I, when I first saw cedar plug, and it was a zillion years ago. Yeah. Um, You're like, I what said, the hell is there, that? There, why are you going to fish that? Yeah. Why don't you put something else out there like a zooker? Yeah. You know? Something colorful. Yeah. And, you know? Dude, I can't even tell you how many times that was the trolling jig to put behind the boat. Yeah. It was just super productive. So, yes, I, I totally get it. And I'm telling you, captains today, they all know that that thing is super pr productive. But if you stand, take the time to stand in the back and watch a cedar plug come through the water, you will be shocked at how much it swims like a, a good swimming surface iron. And that will tell you why certain good swimming surface iron are so productive. Yeah. It, it's the way it moves. It's not about the paint because it's wood with a big bullet-shaped lead chunk in the front of it. Yeah. It's not trying to be fancy or anything. Right. Um, so... <clears throat> I, I think that should be a lesson to guys who maybe haven't uh, fished very much. Watch, watch why Observe. certain things are so productive. Yeah. Because that that is definitely one of them. You can watch that thing. It's just coming through the water while it's getting towed behind the boat. Being it's observant. Just, yeah, you know, right. It's, it's moving. It's moving. And, you know, he asked that question, but, you know, Jeff was out on the San Diego the other day. And, you know, everybody's using knife jigs and flat yeah. falls and everything else. But he said, hey, 6X Junior still got bit. So did the Taddy 9. Uh -huh. Those old school lures. That, yeah, it, I don't, yeah, I mean, we used to catch them that way. Why would they stop eating that? They wouldn't. Yeah. Right? They, they wouldn't. No. They wouldn't. No, they're you know, still, it's, yeah. it, it's not like they're preferring one over the other. Maybe, maybe in certain situations, maybe it's swimming mm. wrong to motivate those fish. Maybe the angler isn't winding it fast enough to get it to move the way it needs to move. Yeah. But it's rarely the fault of the jig. Yeah. Rarely the fault of the jig. Yeah, I so. agree with you. I yeah. agree. Uh, let's see. Darren. Uh, oh, no. We already. Kai Fishkiller. Hey, Kai. I haven't seen you tonight. Good to see you, my <laughs> friend. I have a Gusa 8 foot 12 25 is, is good similar rod or Phoenix Black Diamond Inshore 9 foot 10 30. For what? 
Okay. I, I think that would be the question that I would ask first. Yeah. What What is it you're trying to accomplish? When When I go over a build with a customer, yeah, that is all part of that conversation. What do you, What What are you doing? What are you, what are you, are you use trying this for? to to do? And if it's more of a uh, average generic build, like for island mm. fishing, for instance, I'm going to Catalina well, and the, I need or a like rod. like the Pride did tonight, the Coronados. To the Coronados. Yeah. We're going to drive 100 miles. We've got three minutes to fish. We better make it happen. Right. So, so uh, that, that's just part of the conversation. Kai said for anchovy. Okay, for mm. anchovy. Yeah. Frankly... I don't think either one of those makes a good anchovy rod. Okay. A as we know it, as, as guys that have fished anchovy and know that fishes, how delicate the bait is, how light the line is, uh, what, the, what the rod needs to be able to do to allow the bait to get away from the boat, yeah. in spite of the fact that we have the best performing <laughs> reels ever. Right. Now we have three-speed st reels, right? We still... I love three-speed reels, yeah. by the way. Are they cool? They're super cool. Yeah. Bobby Taft was telling yeah. me they're good. Yeah. yeah. But in spite of that, the, the rod is what is going to be your limitation for anchovy fishing uh, because it won't have that, um, that tip that allows that bait to pull line out of the guides of that rod. Yeah. So when the tip <clears throat> is too responsive, you get a little bit less ability on the anchovy side to get away and swim naturally and all that keep in mind you're probably going to collar hook it if you're fly lining it nose hook it there is no shoulder hooking an anchovy as far as i know yeah i've never done it no i don't even know that it's possible without your rod you need to really focus on stuff that is um glass in the tip at least composite construction i have not seen uh with the exception of maybe some trout rods uh, a graphite rod that has a, a soft enough non-reactive tip to allow an anchovy to really to really do its thing. Yeah. Why don't you take a sip of your Diet Coke while I thank, thank you. Can I th thank some sponsors around Absolutely. Right? All right, let me look up there. Opsin Fluorocarbon, www.opsinusa.com. Put in FA at checkout, and Greg will pin you. A magnificent, like the Magna Carta. He'll write you this letter that you will never forget. 22nd Street Landing in beautiful San Pedro. Do you know where that is? I know where it We're is. We're right really here. Well. It's our home studio. Ventura Sport Fishing. Tucker McCombs. He does nice. such a great job up there. 805-676-3474. Big Fish Bait and Tackle in the beautiful city of Seal Beach, California. Island Fishing Tackle. Fantastic. Sam De La Torre. We've already given him props. Yep. Honestly, I like to screw with them here on the show a little bit, but <laughs> can't meet a better guy. And the you know, you walk into that store, I see it all the time. Yeah. Nobody walks into that store and there isn't somebody saying, "Can I help you? What is it you're looking for?" Yeah. Oh, I'm looking for blah blah blah. Well, you probably spending too much money doing that. Let me show you a better alternative. Yeah. You know that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. I love that. Um, Fish Taco Chronicle Magazine, right here, Sean. Oh. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> you can't even see it. I got the camera all screwed up. Here, I'll just, can you hold this the rest sure. of the show? I'm sure. going to get it. <laughs> um, and Daiwa. I almost forgot wow. Daiwa right behind you. The rods fantastic. and reels, they are number one. And you've already mentioned our May 15th uh, casting, jig fishing, comp not competition. It's a, really a workshop. Yeah. And the guys from 540 are going to be there. We're going to take you through it, show you the mechanics. A fun day, and I hope you can make it. The casting pond over there at Recreation Park in Long Beach, right off 7th Street. It's going to be a great day, and if you can't make that, or even if you can, we're going to go over to Jason's Place, Shoals in Long Beach, 11.30, that starts. Dodger Dogs! Nice! And so much more. <laughs> Chicken wings, and so much more. The Judith Ann, Tom Duras, little four-pack, oh. five-pack out here. If you'd like to charter Tom, I've done it many times, have a good time all the time. It's 310877. One, two, five, seven. Oh my God, I'm almost uh, going to have a headache here. <laughs> and also, I just want to remind you all, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. All right, nice. I think we have more questions there. Can you believe this stuff? I can't. I'd like to Great ask you. Great questions. I, I, sometime, I'd like to ask you a question. <laughs> I want to get into the competition that you have. I would love to talk about that. L let me get a few more questions, and we're going to definitely do that. All right, uh, Brandon, Darren, my first ever rod was a custom Calstar glass rod. Do you see any of our older folks? Is he talking about me? <laughs> Still requesting 
glass rods from your clientele? Or are they, are they requesting that? Or is my generation moved on from it? Oh, he's rubbing in that he's a young guy. I'm an old fart. You know, Brandon. that's a that's a great question. Though. It is a good that question. That is a great question. I think one of the <clears throat> things that we honestly don't even know yet is how many people are going to go back to the older gear. I still fish with certain glass rods. Do you? I just love the way they fish. Yeah, it's, and so you get comfortable with something. Absolutely. It's hard to change sometimes yeah. when, when you get you, older. When you know how it's going to work, yeah. you know how to cast it, you know how it's going to present a bait or a jig, you just stick with that. And so I think that, I think that for, for the newer anglers that have gotten more uh, tied into the current technology rods and reels yeah i to catch these other fish yeah uh, because we've had sard big nice big sardine for so long that unless you know how to cast it unless you know how to present it it's gonna be tough yeah you know i see that there's going to be a lot more people that are fishing spinning reels there's just going to be a lot more people fishing spinning reels. There's that, Sam and I have had this conversation, and there's a stigma attached to it that shouldn't be there, well, right? You know what, though? I understand it. I understand it. I do, too. Because spinning reels, even 20 years ago, yeah. were so incapable of, of doing what we do out here. You make a good point. Completely. So there was incapable. a reason why there was a reason. that whole stigma. Right. Now, though, as we now, move to 2022. You've got 35 pound drag spinning reels that won't blow off of a rod and rip all the guides off as it shoots into the ocean. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are incredibly capable drag systems and uh, rotating heads. Uh, lots of ball bearings being used now uh, in 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 lieu of hard bushing, metal bushing, uh, rotating assemblies and things like that. It, it's just a, a totally different ball game. And yeah. so as people come into our sport, there's going to be more people that opt to fish with uh, spinning reels. I hope that nobody takes a spinning reel out to the bluefin grounds and drops a 500 gram rip roller on a spinning rod and yeah. it hooks something. Yeah, you're screwed. Not that the equipment's not capable. You're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> there isn't a deckhand on the ocean today that would take that rod to help you. Yeah, right. No, you did it. <laughs> you I know, know. It's, just not, it's just not reasonable to take it out. That kind of, right. I will tell you, uh, for a lot of these guys, they're going to end up fishing very short top shot, fluorocarbon top shots with braided braided line on very capable, spinning. saltwater worthy spinning reels. Yeah, and Sam so. and I, I don't know if he's talked to you about this, but Sam and I are going to start a series of videos talking about spinning reels and, yeah. and trying to make them more... I, I think that's of mm. extraordinary value. Yeah. And, and I think that as you guys put those together... If you give some direction as to which models for which type of that's fishing, exactly what we're thinking. Boy, it's really gonna it's really gonna unpack for a lot of people what decisions they have to make and yeah. what they have to choose from, because I don't even understand all the numbers because they're inconsistent. I know, right? It gets really confusing. It's really, really confusing. Yeah. And so, you know, a five thousand size spinning reel over here is not the same as a five thousand size spinning reel over there. Right. And so. And how many ball bearings is this one? And how much drag pressure? And how big is the spool? And what kind of rod? Oh my God! So and it, how much is? How many ounces? Exactly. And yeah, all that stuff. Again, I'm not a weight weenie, so if you need a light rod to catch bluefin tuna, there's probably a golf. set of golf clubs in your future. <laughs> there's a golf course right next to the casting pond, so <laughs> we get into those people who just. Banish yeah, them hey. to the cornfield. I mean, the Over there. golf course. Step to the right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. We've got um, Tony Gonzalez. What was the rod model Daiwa was talking for the Chobi um, that is in the works? Do you know that? I don't Daiwa? know that. I should know. They're my sponsor. Sorry, uh, Daiwa. <laughs> uh, Tony if Gonzalez, what was the rod model? Darren, not ah, Iowa. Okay. Hey, Tony, I'm a moron. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So, he just, so he when was we very finally. Polite. Tony's very polite. <laughs> 
uh, get it released. It's going to end up being a CP76L. Yeah. CP76L. And uh, we're very close on it. Uh, it it's it's going to break into some uh, United Composites production time. So I don't know how soon we're going to get it. Yeah. They're, they're incredibly backlogged right now. Yeah, I can imagine. So, uh, what SA, a business that and, is, oh, huh? Yeah, that's yeah. that's fantastic. And and frankly, I wish you could get Randy to come out here and, we and speak. Because, yeah, let's do it. You know, he is uh, he is the legend that people don't even know about. Yeah, let's let's. It's make, crazy. Yeah, it's crazy the accomplishments that he's had, the influence that he's had on pretty much everybody's fishing rod collection. Yeah. You know, whether, whether you have Seekers or whether you have UCs or even uh, just a, a mix of different products that... Randy Penny's had some he's had influence. some influence over yeah. it. And uh, in spite of what everybody else might think, um, Randy actually was at Seeker in Long Beach, was the first one to ever actually build a rail rod. Really? He was the first wow. one. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and again, nobody knows that, but... But him, Randy, you got to get in. Yeah, Randy, you think come Randy's on. watching. Yeah, Randy, come on. watching. Of course he's watching. <laughs> Everybody's watching. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Tony Gonzalez, very polite. He said, "Darren, not die with you, moron." <laughs> Thank you, Tony. CP, CP 76L. Kai Fish Killer. You see, are definitely. Oh, and uh, I'm sorry. 540 Slinger Jeff says, personally, I love glass rods. He loves them. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Kai Fish Killer. You see, are definitely good rods. GUSA, same company. They are light and strong. I started anchovy fishing for calicos when uh, when I started. So, yeah, them, yeah. Th that that uh, original GUSA stuff was fantastic. Um, technology is exactly the same. I will tell you that through the course of the growth and the uh, age of the company. Many things have changed, like in, in raw materials. And so the original Goosa stuff that was made in San Diego, yeah. um, that was all done with graphite and polyester resins. There were certain properties in those resins that made them capable of doing things that the same exact rod today really isn't the same build. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we're, maybe we're at a little bit of a disadvantage because California outlawed that type of manufacturing what what, what was that some poly polyester resins i guess no. were considered uh more toxic they they didn't like the fact that people were using polyester for resins to create composite constructions and it's across the board it's not just fishing rods but it's so, a california thing it's a california thing. yeah so that makes sense yeah. doesn't it yeah without getting too political <laughs> Oh, I love to get political. You can just oh, check really? me out on the on the Facebook page. But, oh, do you get political? Oh yeah, you do. Yeah. And do you want to tell? Or do you, you know, I, I are you conservative I don't know. or liberal? Or? I am super. <laughs> some of my friends would say I'm super conservative. Uh huh. Um, and I believe in our country. I believe in me our too. freedoms. Yeah. And and that's what is important to me. I am um, definitely in favor, or I, I should say. I would lean more, even more libertarian because of that. So but, you're like, get government out of my life. You yeah. guys, you know what? Pave roads yeah. and protect the country yeah. with a there are There are certain, us alone, things, certain right? things that we need you for. Yeah. And brother, there are things that you have no business doing. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, and I think that uh, in general, government in general across the country has, found, has been found that they're completely ineffective. Or, completely or incompetent. Incompetent and ineffective. Yeah. And, and so I think that uh, my political views, uh, if you took, <clears throat> if you cut the country up, I think I would probably be most at home in Texas. Or Florida. Or, well, Florida only recently. Yeah, I think. Right. So, but they've uh, swung now. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm the most Asian redneck that I know of. Hey, I'll tell you something. I'm, I'm going to give you a few more questions, but you're, <laughs> you know what? You see a lot of people like from Vietnam and uh, Asia, oh yeah, they are very conservative because they've come from the Absolutely. nightmare. Absolutely, and and, and, and and you know, I travel a lot, so some people I, I get the feeling some people are like, all right, you, I think you like Mexico and. Uh, 
China better than you like it. That can't. Oh be. no no no! Traveling <laughs> gives you this perspective. Perspective that I was in communist China for yeah. three years. Yeah. I understand what top-down censorship. And you yeah. come back here, and it's it's getting like kind of crazy around here, but not like that. Oh no! Yeah, and we still, and, you know, yeah. we still have an opportunity to change a few things. Yeah. So yeah, we need to take that. All right. Anybody has a political question? Well, we can get uh, thrown off YouTube. <laughs> Just ask. Let's see. Kai Fish. Oh, let's see. Uh, Brandon. He wants to know. Um, both. This is for both of us. I haven't used the three-speed reel. You obviously have. You said you love it. I do, you, I do you think he wants to know is it necessary? Okay, so just like uh, just like so many other choices that you get to make in life, it's not about whether it's a need. It's more about whether it's a want, and that want has to do very much so with utility. Yes, um, two speed reels are the standard today. Yeah, and and growing up, you guys. Honestly, I never thought I would need a Fathom 15 extra narrow two-speed reel. What for? Right. It doesn't hold enough line or heavy enough line for me to actually put it on the rail to take advantage of a two-speed, but I have it. Yes. Now with the three-speed equipment, mm -hmm. what I feel it does, and I don't always get down into first gear, the lowest gear, but if I need it, if I need it, we can push the drag forward, throw it in low, and really, put the really screws. start to put pressure on the fish. Yeah. When we're confident that we've got the fish hooked properly, that we have the conditions that aren't going to allow that fish to, to really do anything crazy, yeah. we put it in low, and I've watched, I watched a 250 pounder come straight to the boat <laughs> on my rod. I mean. I unfortunately I wasn't the one Why on the rod, yeah. but I it watched your my rod. rod with that three-speed reel in ultra low, and it literally just wound the fish to the boat. Wow! And you guys, I, I gotta say something about fit, fighting a fish. Yeah. If you can keep the fish pointed at the boat and moving toward the boat, yeah, one inch at a time. Yep. You're winning the game. Yep, absolutely. At, at the moment you sit and, and have a pity party about how tired you are and not being able to whine on the reel anymore, that fish is winning, man. So you have to just do what you need to do to, to get, keep the fish keep coming. coming. Right, right, right. Tony Gonzalez, I think he's confirming that anchovy rod again that you have. It's the CP76L. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, Tony. Kenji, Jeff, 540 Slinger, trip on the San Diego was epic. It looked, <laughs> like, a, it looked like a great trip. 12 hour trip and came home with a bluefin. Damn. Dang. Now I'm jonesing to go out again. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, I make this point a lot, but Kenji is right. You leave at six o'clock in the freaking morning. <laughs> you come back at six o'clock at night. Used to be you'd be stoked with a sand bath. Oh yeah. Now you get an eighty pound bluefin tuna. How? That's what kind of a world? What? That's crazy. We walked into this weird yeah. world. Yeah. We are so blessed. Oh right yeah. Now, right. It's it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I got to agree. I, I, mean, I feel bad for the guys that are just getting into the sport, thinking that this bluefin thing happens all the time. Yeah, I know. What happens when that goes away? I mean, and is it ever going to go yeah. away? Will it go away? I, I don't, don't know. know. But if something it does, weird has happened, yeah, there's going to be a lot of tackle for sale. Oh, I know. Like you know, five hundred like, pound knife. What the jigs? heck? Yeah. yeah what, are you know, do what are you going to do? Your wife's going to so, hit you over the head with exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So why did you buy so many of these? Yeah. That's but dumb. They're, they're Christmas tree decorations, yeah. also, yeah. sweetheart. And they anchor the tent when we go camping. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All those things. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Um, and 6 un is your company making the big surf rods, 12, 14-footers? No. Okay. Um, there are very few companies that are still building uh, those long surf rods. Yeah. Um, the last one that I was aware of was um, Talon, who is up in Washington. Uh, that company changed hands, and now Brad Loomis uh, owns that company. Yeah. 
I don't think he's continuing with that product though. Oh, okay. So I'm unsure if it's still available. Yeah. But that was the hot tip. I fish a 10 foot uh, uh -huh. in the surf and I love, you know, mm -hmm. I like to throw a crocodile or Lucky Craft or something uh -huh. like that. But now I'm fishing bait for a little while. <laughs> too many. That's okay. Too many spot thin croakers Heck starting yeah. to bite, man. That's all right. Yeah. That's good fishing. And I figured out, hey man, I figured those crappy sandworms out finally. I'm going to do a video on it, but nice. You, you take the shovel and you're digging, you're digging, you're making this giant circle, and then you see one, right? And those bass, uh, or pardon me, those little guys are fast. Huh. So you jump down on your hands and knees, and it's in the hole. So I figured it out. You dig that, you're around, and then you get down on your hands and knees and you just start going like this on the sides. Boom, you get one. Boom, you get one. No way. Yeah, I had like 30 in, in about a half hour, man. We were rocking. And those sandworms live here, so that's what the fish are used to feeding yeah. on. Yeah. And they're all over it, man. Oh they bite that really gosh. good, including the freaking bat rays. That's all right. Yeah, that's all right. All right, uh, Tony Gonzalez. All respect, Phil. Uh, you guys are doing a great job. Tony, you're the man. I love this guy. <laughs> Tony's great. Uh, 540 uh, Slinger. Jeff, Kenji, thanks so much for coming out uh, on Saturday. It's always great to fish with you. Those guys, uh, I'm so happy I met you. What a Jeff. great community. And, yeah. What a great community. I'm telling you, we, we and, are blessed. Yeah, and, and Jeff was the one who made that happen. Yes, so, yes. Props to him. And, and... Yeah, Jeff is the one who came up with this whole thing on May the 15th, too. He was yeah. doing it already, and then, I don't know if I said, hey, should we do this together? He Probably he reached out to me, and uh, working with a guy That's of cool. his quality, and yeah, I'm, I'm all over that. And a guy that loves dogs as much as him oh my God. could not be a bad guy. Exactly, right? Period. Yeah, my mom, same thing. She was the same exact way. In fact, she always used to... Say, you know, you judge a civilization by the way they treat their animals, too, you know? So she was yeah. all, you know. <laughs> Mikey B. Yo, Jeff. And he's way out there on the East Coast, Mike. Wow. He's on, in New York, I think. Um, always try to make it. I miss the coast. And Fishy Peeps, LOL. He's part of the community. He's a That's great cool. guy. He was in here. You know, we that have a live audience cool. once in a while. Well, we had one tonight, right? Matt came yeah. down. Yeah. So every once in a while we get that. All right. Kyle Berg, it looks like. More drag, the better. Two minutes beats two hours. By a long shot. You agree with that? By a long shot. Yes, but and, uh, down. Honestly, and... I'd rather lose him in the first five minutes than lose him after two hours. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm all yeah, let's over pull on fish it. a hard Let's drag. pull on it. Yeah, right? Yeah. Especially with the kind of tackle we have today. It's so good. Yeah. People have no idea. I mean, we couldn't do the same kind of power fishing with a jig master as we can uh fathom 25 in yeah right you know, just you couldn't do it before we were on the amigo uh, yeah. last summer and patrick my son i i, I guess he well, i thought he yo-yoed yellow side seed roast with me uh -huh. but for some reason i gave him the hundred pound with a yo-yo <laughs> and i go no the fish takes no line okay and he loved it oh man. yeah he just freaking that's loved fantastic it. no line you know they take line you're doing something wrong yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then it's it's actually harder. Oh it's yeah, against oh, the fish. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it is it is full contact fishing. Absolutely. But super rewarding. It is super rewarding. I got one up in the bow, and Jeff was looking out the wheelhouse window. Jeff Jessup, <laughs> and I go, I can throw it. And he goes, I don't think so, old man. And I go, Get out of my way. And I, it wasn't huge. It was like 15, 18 pounds. Uh -huh. and, I managed to barely get it up oh over the Oh my mountain. gosh, that's awesome. It felt like the good old days. That's awesome. Yeah, that's fun stuff. All right, Brandon says, um, when he says Brad Loomis, is that the G. Loomis company? No. Okay. Brad Loomis is the son of Gary Loomis. Oh, okay. And he has his... His own thing? His own uh, operation. What happened there? Did they have a little falling you know, out or something? Or frankly, I, I, don't, I don't really know yeah. uh, all the exact details, but uh, Well, Brad, my kids are doing their own podcast. You know, so you good know. for them. Yeah, man. right. That's cool. They don't right. want to get dragged down by some old man. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, but Brad is super, super capable, very talented, That's composites great. guy. Um, so... People, the guys that are using him for production, uh, they're in very good hands. Some so. kids want to go out and, you know, and, and I'm all for that. That's why my kids, sure. I'm like, yeah, go do it. Because, 
You know, I mean, if dad say, now you do this, and that, they don't really learn. You go out, the, the whole process is yeah. falling down a little bit and then Absolutely. figuring it out, right? Yeah. And I am one who's falling down a lot, <laughs> so I'm good at that, let me tell you. Um, yeah, G. Loomis was Gary Loomis, hence name Gloomis. That's uh, yeah. Kai Fishkiller saying that. Uh, okay, and then Mark Fujimoto is back. All right, uh -oh. here we go. I want a super light blue fin rod, and I don't play golf. <laughs> Would a UC Zeus and a three-speed reel work for me? Uh, Mark wants I, to know. I have a feeling that we're going to find that very thing out in about a month. Oh, yeah? Gonna He's going to have it? We're going to take some new rods out. Uh, we have a uh, <laughs> four-day on the XL that he and I and another friend, Tommy, we're kind of like the three guys that got together on that deviant blank. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be out there on the Excel trying to catch some of these darn bluefin. And uh, we're going to have some jigging rods uh, set up with the three speed uh, HX Avid. And we're going to try and hook them. Oh, man, that's going to be a great try trip. And hook them. You've yeah. got, I mean, you know, I, I love our community, as you say, yeah. but you brought all these, Mark and several other guys, and they just seem like such great oh. people. You know, you don't even get a, a, a true glimpse of the people that I've been able to surround myself with without coming to the shop yeah. and having an ice cream and sitting down for a cup of coffee and just chatting around the table. Yeah. It is, it, it, for one, it's super healthy conversation. Yeah. Really, really good quality conversation. But <clears throat> we embrace each other as family. Uh, and so... We just, we're always trying to be better than we were. Yes. And so the, we're, we're always developing new stuff. We're always helping each other. Uh, Captain Butch, just a, 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 just a fantastic man. Yep. And I'm lucky to have him as a friend. Yep. And uh, we worked with him to develop his tuna tamer stuff. And uh, <laughs> we were sitting around the table. He wasn't even there. Um, and we developed the tuna taper for him, which is basically just a, a, a seamstress tape yeah. with instructions on how to calculate the taped out weight of oh, your cool. bluefin. Oh, very cool. And, it, and we just use it as a, a, as a giveaway. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's just one of those things that it's branding for him. It gets people aware. Absolutely. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's handy for people to use. Absolutely. So. By the way, we have a trip. I'm just going to give a plug. But sure. These questions, and there's so many people watching. You've brought, <laughs> there's a lot of people, and then it's I'm, just going to keep yeah, going. Yeah, I made all my friends uh, log in. Today. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> I started paying people. My wife doesn't speak English, and she's listening. She's like, okay, Felipe, what is this? You know? uh, um, we have a trip May 22nd out of Ventura Sport Fishing on the right. Island Spirit with a few spots left. Text me at... Six five seven. Almost forgot my number. Six five seven two two seven six four five nine. If you'd like to jump on board, only one hundred and twenty five, and it's full day. We're leaving at six a.m. Back in at five. Ventura Sport Fishing, May the twenty second. We will be focusing on white sea bass. If they don't want to play, we'll fill the sacks with rockfish. But our main thing is to catch some whitefish, white sea bass, whitefish. Stephen Ennis. How important is the spine of the blank? Oh, and man. can you explain that a little bit? Why, why, I, why is that important? I can tell you that I get that question so much. I, it, it's almost as if I've rehearsed this whole thing. Okay. So give me just a few minutes because it's kind of long. Okay. Okay. This is going to be so, good. Do, do we need a drum roll or anything? We might need some background music or you you know, something kind of cool, uh, jazzy. Uh, I'm out. No? Yeah, okay. sorry. So I'll just get started. Yeah, anyway, go ahead. So the spine of the rod, uh, it, it is important if you're using uh, a blank that is made out of a single flag of material. There are still some. Not all, but there are still some. Yeah. As soon as you add a second flag of material to create the correct action that you're looking for, it creates a secondary spine. Oh, there wow. may be one that is dominant over the other, but the likelihood of those two flags lining up and creating a single spine in a blank is so remote that you have to start to consider which one do I build on or how important is it really? Yeah. So. Hmm. 
What I tell everybody is when blanks used to be uh, made out of a single flag of material, like they were back in the 60s, yeah. back in the 70s, a lot of our glass blanks that we fished with back then were made out of a single sheet of material. You literally had to spine them or else the guides were going to fold over. Right. If you're a custom rod builder and you're setting up your next build and you're trying to find the spine, the likelihood of you having one, two, or maybe even three or four different spots that you're rolling that blank into. And it's almost like it's on a grid or something and you're going, grr, grr, grr. it's literally finding all these different uh, clock locations for the spine. That's crazy. Which one do you pick? Yeah, right. You don't have to pick any. You really don't have to pick any. Uh -huh. I will tell you that as I'm a rod builder, I still spine all my rods to whichever one I think the rod is going to be bent to. Yes. I don't overbend it. I don't underbend it. You know, I'm going to put a bend in the rod that I feel like that rod is probably going to be used at. Yeah. And so we try to find that primary spine for that kind of bend. But does it have to be done? Probably not. No. Probably it's not. Necessary. not. Um, we used to have a situation where the guides would fold over if you didn't put it on the spine. I, sus I uh, suppose that if the blank has a very hard dominant spine, you probably should be building on that. Yeah. Uh, because the guides may fall over. But what is the reason for even putting the, the blank on spine? Most people can't answer that question. Why is it that you put a blank on a spine when you're custom building a rod? The reason why they came up with putting a blank on a spine is because in that situation, if the rod was to fold over and the guides were to turn over, what would happen is the blank would delaminate. Oh, uh -huh. Back in the day, that was a thing. If they got too much radial tension on yeah. the blank, it would come apart and it would create a failure. Yeah. So yes, you want to put those on a spine. In today's world, with the epoxy resins that we Don't use, have to worry about that. multiple flags, <clears throat> the kind of construction that we have in our blanks, I, I don't see that delamination from being off spine is even a thing. In fact, I don't know that there's been a single rod failure uh, uh, well, in the last 20 years or really? 30 years that was due to it being off spine. Yeah. So that's the whole thing. Why is it built on spine? Why is any rod built on spine? And by the way, it's spine, not spline. I grew up calling it spline. Yeah. I've now realized that it's spine. So <laughs> why do you even put it on spine? Because uh, you don't want the guides to rotate. If the guides rotate, is it going to delaminate? No. And so why? You can literally build uh, rods on what they call the straightest axis, where you rotate the rod, and whatever, whatever, wherever the blank is the straightest, and you can, uh, through your eye shot, you can see that the blank is straight in yeah. that clock position. You could build it on that, and it'll be fine. Perfect. So, make sure you hit that uh, like button, like all of you have done so far, and subscribe to Friedman Adventures. Remember, if you have trouble sleeping at night. Just put Freeman Adventures on and you'll be sleeping <laughs> within a few months. Unless we have great guests like Darren. That's when I'm alone. Butch Diaz. Darren is surrounded by great people. He must be talking about me. No, I don't think so. Lucky to have him as a friend because I've met so many great people. Butch is a great guy, isn't he? He is uh, one of mine and my wife's very best friends. And we just totally value him. I know he already knows that. He's obviously online listening, but yeah, uh, yeah. he, he uh, and Mark and there are several others that, like I said, we're just surrounded by just absolutely the cream of the crop, just fantastic people. I told Tony and uh, Janelle up front that I said, I'll try to get out of here at a decent hour tonight because <laughs> the boats are, you know, how long, take a guess, how long have we been talking? Take, just take a guess. I would say 45 minutes? Yeah, two hours. No. Yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, my God. Almost, too. That's Flying crazy. Flying by. I love it. Flying. Hey, dude. That's because you are... You're, Can we talk about the competition? Yeah, well, let me run oh, okay. through a few more okay. uh, 
I hate to Sorry. leave her. Yeah, we've got to talk about that. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. All right, OC Tuna Club Fishing Channel. Who's that again? Doug. Doug. Thanks, Doug. Green, blue, yellow, rainbow, or white spectra. Is there any advantage or disadvantage depending on the type of fishing you are doing? By the way, I love to play golf at least <laughs> twice per week. Doug gave you one there. He must, he must use very light rods then. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, okay, so with respect to, to color, yeah, uh, and any line for that matter, um, I learned this from Corey Sandin of MC Swimbait. Okay. He is, uh, he is just famous for the surface action swim baits, whether it's a weedless bait over the kelp canopy, whether it's the slug, every fish is looking up at the line. Uh-huh. In general, the sky is not black. It's not dark green. It is light blue, hazy gray, whatever. Yeah. Cloudy white. Um, and so I tend to prefer to fish those colors. If I'm not fishing those colors, for, for instance, all my, all my uh, big gear, all my big tuna gear has white spectra. Uh -huh. That's just what I fish. Yeah. Because... In general, the fish are looking up at the line yeah. and the sky is the backdrop. Makes sense. If I'm not fishing hollow spectra, I fish uh, a brand of spectra that really only comes in orange. Um, and I feel comfortable with that because as the line goes through the water column and we lose light uh, penetration through the water, the reds or red colors begin to... Uh, vanish faster. Yes. And so I don't have a problem fishing red. I don't have a problem fishing orange. I don't have a problem fishing yellow. I think that the darker colors will show in the water column. But honestly, I don't fish uh, a real short top shot, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'm more concerned about the fact that I can't see it. Yeah. I can't see dark colors. Yeah. So me looking down at the water during the day... My vision is to the point where I, I have a tough time seeing black or green spectra. Yeah. Uh, and so it's hard for me to fish that. I, you know, I understand. It's a, it's a feel thing and it's a finesse thing. Um, but still yet, I prefer to be able to watch my line instead of have to rely on my sense of feel. Yeah. So. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, let's see. Who do we have next there? Kai Fish Killer. He says the color of spectra so you can see it and get tangles out easier. That's why he, sometimes the multiple colors will help if it's metered by X amount of it. Measure, metered by X amount of it. Speaking of not being able to see. Look at yeah. That. Oscar Jimenez, Speedy said, what is the next 310 Rodworks eater, eatering meeting? Oh, what do you I have? Can, you, listen. Y'all get together and eat? Listen. I'm staying away you know, from you, you guys. You, you hear about all these guys in our fishing community that yeah. talk about being on a pro staff. Yeah. Or a field staff. Yeah. You've right? got the eating staff. We have food staff. Oh, my God. So, for anybody who's out there in the fishing world, if you enjoy eating, you are an honorary member of the 310 Rod Works food staff um, because we feel like you're important. All right. I'm in. But I got do it. the keto thing. So, I leave the tortilla off. I'll eat that's, the carnitas, man. Hey, just, heck yeah. All I want. I love it. Can man. you do the guacamole with the oh, heck carnitas? Yeah. Okay, so we yes. can we can work that out. We guacamole, that I'm out. good. Absolutely. And every once in a while I say the hell with it. <laughs> I was in Mexico the other day and I was like, screw this, I'm eating tacos. You know? <laughs> Freaking at this carne asada place that's one of my oh, favorite places man. in Tecate and oh. Los Amigos it's called. And the guys are great, and I'm just like, oh, you know, F it. Yeah. You know, I'm, Give it I'm, to I'm, me. Yeah, exactly. Give it to me. Hit me with that. <laughs> exactly. Um, Rocket Dog. No, no, no more spine finding. I think he's happy. Yeah. Mark Fujimoto, OC Tuna Club. Uh, if it's BC's real, it's <laughs> a disadvantage, no matter what color the line is. Well, we know where BC is once we, uh, once we see the tangle, that's for sure. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, 
Oh my God, we got all wow. kinds of stuff. Wow, man. it's just not man. stopping. All right, let me get back here. Um, jeez. <laughs> all right, here we are. David Maestro. <laughs> Darren is a solid dude and a wealth of knowledge. Another wow! Guy, guy, another guy you paid, Doug. Hey, David's a great guy. He is a great you know guy, him, right? and he didn't ask me for very much money at all. Oh, well, that's very nice. Very generous. David, I forget what it was. I was up in the bow of the Amigo, and I didn't have a Ganyan or something, and he's like, hey, I got you covered, dude, man. he is such a good guy. Oh, he's a great guy. Great I, hope, guy. I hope I get to fish with him again. Kai Fish Killer. I'm old school. I still only handpick... The rod on spine can only help. I, I still only handpick the rod on spine. Can only help. You know what? They're starting um, to play taps now. Yeah. We've been here so long. Yeah. You know that? Coming to an end this day. No, it's sure. not. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Not until Tony and Janelle come in here and start <laughs> screaming at us. Get out of here. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, so yeah, he's still Arizona. Yeah. He likes to do that. All right, uh, Sam Sam De La Torre. Oh! Samuel De La Torre. Nice. Hate to chime in late. Busy with kid stuff. Oh well, well what do you what do you want to say, Sam? That's it. <laughs> oh, Sam wasn't watching. Yeah, hey, I'll tell I'm you very what. Very disappointed. I, I will say this. Muy with... malo, Sam. Muy 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 malo. Estoy enojado contigo. <laughs> I just cussed him out. With respect to my circle of friends yeah. and the community that I have around me, yeah. I always tell everybody that this is just fishing. This is just fishing. Even though it's how I make my living, even though I know that it's important as a... as a, a You mean calm down and enjoy it. Exactly. Don't make this, this is, like this is something just fishing. that bring you so, aggravation. Yeah, when, when somebody has kid stuff, or medical, physical, it, it could ailments. be an event, yeah, at their school or yeah. whatever. You always are going to pick that stuff. You always have to over pick a fishing that trip, stuff. over talking fishing, being at a fishing event, going on a fishing trip. I, I agree you with you. Always to pick that hundred percent. Because although um, I was fishing for white sea bass when my son Philip was born, but besides that, I agree for, with you. Besides that Just particular one situation. That was a little blip in the road. That's okay? right. So and I learned my lesson. It's okay. Yeah. But I, I think that <laughs> I think it's way more healthy for people in general to just keep perspective of what this all means, what this really is. This is our ability to have conversation. Yeah. It's our ability to have friendships and to be around one another. But it is not something that is going to alter. Right. Yeah. Right. It, alter life. Or, right. But going to your kids' piano recital. Absolutely. And, you got to prioritize those things. And coming back to a, one of our first conversations tonight, when you have the opportunity to be that person in a kid's life or somebody's life where you're sharing your there you go. excitement for fitting, that's when it counts. Yes. It only counts a little bit. Uh, when you're the top dog on the boat, yeah, when you're right. the highliner, when you're when you are the ace for the day, it only counts for a little bit when you get the jackpot fish. But when you make a difference in somebody's some young person's life, and you make them love fishing as much as you do, man, you've hit a home run. I agree. I couldn't agree more. Mikey V, curious to know Darren's thoughts on slow pitch rods. Mikey V in New York. It's past midnight almost for him. What that a guy. is insane. Love you, Mikey. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So slow pitch is something very new to me, um, but it's something so important to our business that I'm forced to learn it. Um, I don't know that much about it yeah. uh, because the way I understand it, slow pitch is something that was designed for reef, bottom, and cod fishing. Uh, they do a lot of that in the East Coast, Florida, right? Or I, I would imagine that it's yeah. gotten very popular because of the lightweight tackle. Mm -hmm. However, the technique itself is exactly the same as the way I learned how to fish our cod with a Jerry, uh, 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 Jack's jig and a shrimp fly. Okay, yeah. On a heavy rod with a 4-0 senator. Yeah. That's exactly how I fished that jig. So it didn't take a special jig. It didn't take a special rod. It literally was the exact same motion. 
and the way you present that bait as it's falling back down. It right. just wasn't a spoon-shaped bait back then. Yeah. It was more of a diamond jig or a lead bullet-shaped jig or, or whatever. Yeah. You know, I was a huge fan, and this is just a, a little plug for a brand that doesn't even exist anymore. I was a huge Freiburger jig guy, uh, Central Coast lead poured, hand lead poured jig. Yeah. I love those things, uh -huh. and that you was have what any I have a bunch. Oh, you do? In fact, I'm not even a vintage collector guy, but I will collect Freiburger yeah. jigs when I see them for yeah. sale. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, Brandon wants to know uh, your best fishing story, fishing a wham, whether it's on a boat or fishing the beach. Okay, so... so Oh, my God. We I have, have 500 more questions to go. I, my goodness. Let's keep so, it going. They're so, going to kill me. Yeah. So um, my favorite story of fishing whams, there are so many great trips that we did specifically with whams for, yeah. for our uh, lure of choice. But mm. I went out on the, it was one of the charter boats that did like three-quarter day fishing out of San Diego. Uh-huh. We went out there and just by chance, um, uh, mom and her son came out on the trip. They were out from Florida. Yeah. And they had nothing else to do. The, the dad and the other brother went to do something else. So she brought her younger son out on the boat for awesome. her half day fishing. How nice. And, um, and it was fun. It was fun fishing. But we got on this wham bite. Man, he couldn't cast. He couldn't cast to where the fish were. So I would gra I grab the rod and I'd fire that thing out there, throw it in gear and hand him the rod. And by the time the thing got 10 feet down, that calico was just on it. <laughs> and so we did it over and over. <clears throat> and the mom is watching from the top deck because she doesn't want to get in the way. She's yeah, not she's interested in that. She's just watching her son and he's having a ball and we're, fl we're flinging that wham That's out awesome. there. And it must have been... Hey. Hey, Brian, what's up? <laughs> Do you want to come in and say hi to everybody real quick? Let's step on those cords. Right here. Look in there. Hello, oh, there you go. Brian <laughs> from the Monte Carlo. Yeah, boy, hey, you're stepping you. on my microphone cord. Uh -oh. what, do you, what boat are you going on? Is the Pride still here? Yes. Yeah, oh, here. you're going on the Pride? Yeah, I might end up working on Oh really? Oh, yes. right. they got it. They're short. <laughs> oh, yeah, something like that. Don't do that. Hey. It's okay. I'll teach them people how to catch them. And, there you go. And who are you going to bring a halibut to? If I catch, I, I might not even catch them. I know. I'm trying to get a halibut out of somebody. <laughs> I might not even get the fish. Brian is the man. Hey, by the way, on the casting contest, we're gonna have a casting contest. Scott Buchard said, if Brian Burrell shows up, he will smoke everybody. No, you I got a, a spectrum now. I'd have to take off all my spectrum and put them on. Why? You can do the spectrum. <laughs> Brian, thanks for coming by. All right, guys. That's thanks, part Brian. of the beauty of being here. You That's know, so all these cool. characters that, that come is in great. here. And, yeah. Hey. Brian Burrell. Yes, sir. Nothing. <laughs> All right, uh, a few more. Oh, I'm trying to get to your yeah. yeah before our battery runs yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. I, I thought that was going to be Tony or somebody saying, get the hell out of here. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see. Um, okay, so we got that question. We have I Frederick. I can't believe it's been that long, this long already. I'm Two telling hours. you, man. When your time flies when you're having fun. Freddie and Speedy say hi. hi. Speedy and I are watching from our benches while nice. wrapping some deviants. Nice. Isn't that nice? Kai Fish Killer. Also, if you get white spectra, back to that, you can always use Sharpie or garlic scented markers to camo the last three to five feet uh, if you need to do that. Is that a good good idea? Yeah, you're in the. I I suppose I suppose so, but I've never. I, I'm too lazy. That. Yeah, I'm too lazy to carry a bunch of markers and break them out and I know, right? use that. As a, as a means to get the next bite. I would rather just keep switching baits and putting a good bait out there. Honestly, I don't, I don't know that that works. So maybe, maybe it does for Samuel some people. Samuel de la Torre. Oh, man. De la, the man. De donde? You know say. Uh, bueno. He, oh, he wants to know, maybe you guys have discussed this already. Maybe you should have been listening. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Kids are more important. We just discuss that, Sam. Uh, are you coming to the casting event? No! I am going to be, be on the from plane where? from Puerto Vallarta. From on Puerto that Vallarta. Yeah. That ought to be. Are you yeah. going fishing? Oh, yeah. Obviously. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
All right, uh, Kai Fish Killer. I use spike it garlic scented color yeah. make markers <coughs> to mark the line. All right, Mark Fujimoto, uh, Baja Blue Ragu. Does that make sense to you? That no. would be BC. No, oh, there you go. Okay, uh, Eric Ramos. Darren is awesome. Such a great show. Oh, you're right. Thank you. You know what? I haven't asked either since people were saying the sound was not good in the beginning. I haven't asked that because I was afraid somebody would say, obviously, the sound must be okay, right? Like, Don't say anything. I talk sound. loud enough, and, and you do yeah, as me well. Me too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, OC Club Fishing Channel. I love these guys. All of this talking must be making Darren hungry. Oh, my gosh. I think he's lost a few pounds <laughs> from uh, talking for the past two hours. Good stuff. And quite entertaining. Thank you, guys. Thank Fun you. Fun times. Thank you, guys. Hopefully, it's entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Sam De La Torre. I'd also like to thank Darren for all he's done for me in the fishing industry. Boy, you must have really wow. paid him up. Since I, <laughs> since I met him at Seeker, he's always been a great leader mentor. And, you know, I was talking to Sam, and I go, who'd be a good, great guest? And he said, I go, no oh, my kidding. God, Yeah. That's that right, because so I cool. kind of, you know, when I was in China for three years, yeah. I lost, like, the whole, you know. For sure. Yeah. I yeah, was there was the, none of that over there. I was over there with the commies trying yeah. to hide out, you know. All right, uh, let's see. Um, Pete 310, the camera work is not the same without Steve. Oh, yeah, no, that's very true. Absolutely. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, Steve, screw Steve. <laughs> Rocket Dog, another great show, Phil. Thank you, Darren, for the info and Thank stories. You. It's been great. We got a break. No more questions. Okay, Go. Okay, great. The competition. So, yeah. we have coming up in 2023 at the PCS show, we're going to be putting on our annual custom rod builders competition. And it's something that, uh, again, I, I attribute to the commitment that Sam has made to custom rod building. I, I, I shared earlier that he is really the impetus for the growth of our custom rod building community. Great. So with that, we started, I guess, with COVID and everything. It must be about five years ago, four years ago now, we started with this competition. And although this last one was almost like a last minute development, yeah. it was fantastic. It was, it was really good. Um, KTLA Weekend News came and covered the PCS show, and they I dedicated that, yeah. so much time to the custom rod building activity as well as the competition display. And so we got we got great comments about how they saw the rods on TV. They got to see you know some of this stuff. I've never seen a rod that was as beautiful as that. Do you even fish with those rods? And all comments that were so great and encouraging. Yeah. So for next year, we're opening it up back up and uh, we're going to have room for even more uh, rod builders. That's great. We only had the ability through space to cover 20 builders and that covered both the pro side and the hobbyist side. But for next year, we're going to have, we're working on displays, brand new displays. Uh, that will cover up to 60 participants. Wow. And so with that, there's plenty of room. Plenty of room for people to participate at every level, too. Um, and the interesting thing, I think, that, that I would really want to share is that we use this uh, competition as a means to expose people outside of custom rod building to the builders that are showcasing their goods. So it should function as a way for those builders to get even more that's great. business. That's great. Because that's what I'm all about. I want to help you. If you're a custom rod builder, Phil, you wanna I want you to be successful. Right. And so how better to do that than to put their build in a display where the rod is turning 360 degrees constantly throughout the show with overhead lighting on the rod so it's getting the best possible lighting 100 percent and a little card on the on the wall by the build that says who they are 
with the QR code to go directly to their Instagram page, what the build is all about. This is beautiful. You know, and so it gives them the chance to really expose their business and their mm -hmm. ability to people walking by. Just, just people walking by on the aisle of the show who may have actually come for bamboo pillows. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, right. But all of a sudden now they're like, what Whoa, is that? Yeah. You know? Exactly. Great marketing. So, so we're, we're, we're working really, really hard to make that possible for, for everyone that wants to participate. Now, the other thing about that is we're, we actually have had some super talented youth rod builders. Nothing uh, of, of, of significant uh, artistry, you know, but the found fundamental tech techniques and, and skill set were phenomenal. Really? And these are young kids. That's amazing. You know, and just awesome. Yeah. Just really, really great. Gotta love it. And so this year, uh, our youth segment of the, of the competition, they're going to be provided a rod that's already got the handle on it a set of guides for free and all they have to do is wrap it and finish it and they put it into our display That's as great. their entry. At the end of the show, they take their rod back and all of a sudden they have their own custom rod that they can take out to a lake and go catch a trout on their bill. Win, 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 win. It, it's, it's just a fantastic opportunity for kids to get exposed to our art. Yes. Uh, and, and it is an to art. embrace it. Yeah. At whatever level, you know, maybe it's the only rod that they're ever going to build, but at, at the very least, they've had that exposure to it. They've had the opportunity to try it, and they've competed with other kids, you know, 15 and under. They've competed with other kids, and maybe they did really, really good. Maybe yeah. their build was so impressive to the judges. And so it, it's just a great opportunity for kids to be able to come into this fold of custom rod building. Beautiful. I, I, I really love the opportunity to do that. And if people want more information on that, do they contact you? All they you have or? to do is contact me personally on my Facebook page. Okay. We use social media to do all the marketing for this. We don't do any, we, I shouldn't say that. We do a little bit of print advertising. We do a little bit of of oh, print yes. advertising. Hold that up. Yeah, Sean. Um, in, in this particular magazine. Because it's such a fantastic magazine. I, I really love it. Sean Arnold just, hey, happy birthday, Sean. Happy birthday. Did you know it was his birthday? Yeah. <laughs> Today. Oh, was it? Today? I don't know. I don't know. I'm <laughs> asking you. A couple days ago, I think. That's cool. So, Sean is, is such a great guy. And, and, and again, he really is. just a, a huge supporter of what we're trying to accomplish. And so, he dedicates... Uh, space in the magazine for me to write articles about rod building. That's great. He has brought in other rod component manufacturers to advertise. And so he'll make like a, a, a not a formal, but a, a space in his magazine where the rod building companies can all advertise in the same basic zone of his book. Perfect. And so it really helps the, the rod builders to find what they need. That's great. So. Sean has been a huge uh, in, encourager uh, uh, to keep going on with this competition. We write those articles, we present them, and, uh, and, and it's been really, really good. That is so, great. Yeah. That is great. A few more questions there. Okay. Well, going on two and a half hours okay. almost, man. I'm loving it. <laughs> it feels like about 10 minutes. I know I mean, it. You are such I thought, I thought it was you like 45 minutes. Guest. You're such a great guest. <laughs> You, we're going to have to do this again. You realize I would love that, to. right? I would love to. All right. Uh, let's see. Rocket Dog. Oh, he's just saying another great show. I Thank you. You know why it's a great show? These people. Yeah. With all these questions. Absolutely. Love you they guys. They keep it rolling. You guys are number one. Let's see. Um, Iserline is coming. At, uh, coming. Uh oh. Well, I'm starting to fall off the wall. Iserline is coming out this May and June with Colored Spectra. With the captain saying to mark the line for depths. Do you think you'll try it out? I, I will tell you uh, that there are several metered spectra lines yeah. uh, on the market. The one that I actually may be trying yeah. uh, is actually Jerry Brown Line 1. Okay. Uh, because I just found out that they had it. The former uh, governor of uh, California. No, no. I'm only kidding. <laughs> governor Moonbeam. No. 
So JB Line <laughs> One uh, is a long-standing, high-quality Spectra line. Yeah. Um, they actually have a metered hollow Spectra. Uh, the only the only kind of drawback is that it's it's done in ten yard segments, so thirty foot. Yeah. Not fifty foot. So uh -huh. it's a little bit harder to keep track of how deep you are. You got to know how many colors. Yeah. Kind of no, like right? old lead core. Lead core trolling. I get so screwed up with yeah. that. I so, guess after a few, you know, a few hundred times, you'd figure yeah. it out. But so, so with that, with that uh, metered line, it's a little bit harder to keep track of how deep you are. But I like the fact that it's hollow. Yeah. Uh, because I fish hollow spectra for all of my big fish fishing. Yeah. So. All right, uh, Jeff wants to know: Do you have a go-to surface iron? Uh, honestly. My favorite is the uh, EX7 from Killer. Um, I've had great success with that jig. And I have to believe that it's an old Explorer jig that Killer just knocked off. Um, that's why it's an EX. So it's an Explorer jig. But um, it's, uh, it's a great jig. I, I really like that. Uh, there's also one other jig that I throw a lot, but not in every situation. But when they're eating the big surface iron, um, there is very few jigs that are better than the SIC2. And it's kind of like the large uh, candy bar. Yeah. Um, the SIC2 jig is my favorite for the big jigs. Excellent. Um, Kanji, Brian Burrell, LOL, <laughs> laughing out loud. What a great show tonight. He showed me how to use my Trinidad. Brian is a, have you fished with Brian? Oh, yeah. Super great guy. Great guy. I love guy. the guy. Super talented too. Super I mean, talented. Great man. fisherman. Great jig fisherman. Yeah. I mean, I mean, top notch, like Scott said. Sam said, I think it's time, Sam De La Torre, to do segments on the participants of the competition. What do you think, Phil? 100%. I would Let's love do to it. do that. Can I would we do love that? to do that. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, if we could try to set something up where we have them come to my shop, yeah, we've got a big table, we've got enough I'll space. I'll come down there with. I my would love women. to do it. Yeah, because I would too. We could probably get a lot of them to participate. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, coming up, we are going to be doing a judges workshop, yeah. judging workshop uh -huh. for the competition. So all the competitors who decide to participate, they'll know exactly what? how this thing is going to go down. That's great. How their builds need to look, what judges are going to find important in their builds, and what they're not going to find important in their builds. Yeah. And so, so there it, will be some hidden algorithm like they had on, yeah. uh, on uh, what's it, well, the Twitter. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's there's, exactly no, there's no mystery to it. Right. We're going to lay it all out, and so they can, they can uh, know ahead of time so they can plan their builds accordingly. So if they need information on that, all they got to do is just contact me through Facebook. We'll get them onto the custom Rod Builders Competition Facebook page. And so we'll post all that as well as on Instagram. Let's do that. Okay. I'm in. Sam, another great idea. Uh, N6UN, what's the difference between a trout fishing spinning reel rod and a fly fishing rod blank? You know what? Um, back in the day, they were very much the same. Uh, in fact, sometimes they were built the hey, same Sean. way. Hey, Sean. Oh. Okay, he's leaving. See ya. <laughs> so so they used to be built very much the same very parabolic very loose in today's world the fly rod is still very parabolic very loose super thin very lightweight because they have to do that in order to get the proper action yeah in today's world spinning rods for trout are typically considerably uh stiffer in action just because uh of the construction and they're just lightweight cork gripped you know uh if you're doing something very specific like fishing mini jigs for our urban trout yeah um that's kind of a different situation and it takes a very specific rod and you know a lot of people they'll take a rod uh, rod blank and they'll shake it yeah they'll shake it oh that's a great action honestly that doesn't tell you anything Seriously. It looks good. You know? Yeah. It, but maybe, it doesn't maybe, tell you anything. You know, they'll bang the butt and shake yeah, the rod right. or whatever. Honestly, I don't understand it. Maybe for some people it does tell them something. 
in the in the situation where this mini jig fishing happens uh you literally can shake the blank like as if you had a reel on it and you can shake the blank and you can know exactly if that's the right blank or really not. oh yeah yeah that's great yeah. and in general they're super expensive so you know the right ones yeah right but but they're they're worth it if you're doing that fishing sam de la torre from island fishing tackle in carson california what a great rod building environment compared to what we had 20 30 years ago oh yeah you agree for sure yeah for sure uh david maestro uh that's a great idea for the participants he likes that was somebody there again nope. oh <laughs> I know Tony's going to get out of here. Uh, did you get on the Endeavor Friedman? He's asking me, Tim P. No, that trip canceled. Uh, they've had some nasty weather up that yeah. way. So we rescheduled Tim to the um, Island Spirit. We're going to go May 22nd. Uh, funny question, Darren. Will the judges yell at the builders like they do on the cooking shows with Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I think that would be a I think, I think that would be hilarious. Good idea, Brandon. I think that's hilarious, but I will tell you, we'd have to get all new judges because the guys that judge, they uh, their whole heart is rod building and they don't want to yell at anybody. Yeah, so I know, right? I need to get some way tougher judges mm, if that's going to happen. think of some people. <laughs> hey, we don't have a question. Oh, wait. Yes, we do. Oh, no, we don't. Okay. So I'm going to push a button over here and okay. pick some people while you say what the first prize okay. is going to be. What Perfect. is the first prize? You tell everybody out there. Okay. So for you guys uh, yeah, I'm gonna figure still out. on here, um, we're going to give still away. Still on just... here? There's millions of people. <laughs> So we're going to give away uh, just a few things. I brought a little bit of swag. I brought a couple of products. And um, we're going to, hopefully, we're going to make somebody's day with this. So um, I got three winners now. We're going to give away three prizes. Perfect. So I have a, a short sleeve t-shirt. Um, this one happens to be extra large, but I'll give you whatever size is appropriate. Yeah. Um, so this is the first one is a short sleeve black t-shirt. It's got the pocket, it's got all three of my company logos on the back, and it's got uh, 310 on the front. So is we've that... got that. That is the first one. Okay, and so the winner, and I'm going to throw in a $30 gift certificate to Ops and wow. Floral Carbon, Ruben Lopez. Wow. Okay. There's Ruben Lopez. Notice how I'm putting the names there? So yes, I screw as this. a matter of fact. I screw since, these things all up all Since the time. we have hey, Ziploc bags, we're going to... such a good idea. We're going to put it right in the bag. The we're, second the we're, second item... Oh, wait a minute. Did I... Oh, yeah. No, I have everybody's names there. Okay. So, thank God. So the second item is a long sleeve black uh, T-shirt. Again, 310 Rodworks. Uh, just tell us what size you need, and we'll make sure that it gets out to you. And that winner is Milo, no last name on the thing. I think I know there's a guy named Milo that was surf fishing or was walking down the beach with his wife and asked me what I was doing. I said, I'm surf fishing. You ought to go to Big Fish. And he went and he bought a rod. No way. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, That's Milo's not that cool. common of a name. We're going to throw in a $25 Big Fish gift certificate card to Milo. To Milo. Thank you very yeah. much, Milo. So you'll get the long sleeve. Uh, fishing t-shirt that you can wear on the beach while you're surf fishing. Yeah, and I can just hand deliver that. Maybe. The, I got the right guy in mind. The last uh, out of these three is a pair of our fishing shorts. 310 Rodworks branded. They're actually really super comfortable. They're a little bit stretchy. They're, uh, they have a side pocket for either your cell phone or your pliers. Um, the, I will tell you that the pocket, pockets aren't super deep. So just understand that you may want to put your wallet in your back pocket or whatever. But fishing shorts, again, whatever size you need, just let me know and I will get that sent out to you. Scott Grant. Scott Grant. And he Scott gets a Grant $25. With a $25 gift big certificate. Fish. Ruben Lopez is listening and he says, thank you guys. Thank you, Ruben. Are you kidding? Our Patreon members are awesome. And... Uh, that's it. Are we giving? You have other stuff. I there, have huh? two more things, and they're they're pretty significant prizes. Should it, I give them out? I would love for you to give them out. Okay. Um, these this one is is very specific though. If you're a long range fisherman, I'm hoping that uh, that you can take advantage of this. This one of my companies or one of my brands is Sato Custom Tackle. We make the crimping kits for hollow spectra to leader material. This is a full pro kit. It's got everything that we use 
for uh, doing liter material, whether it's mono or fluorocarbon, insert it into hollow spectra and crimped on. So it's a full pro kit. The retail value on this is $275. Uh, this hopefully will go to somebody who can in fact use it. And if you can't use it, please let me know. Let's talk and I will make sure that you get something that you can in fact use. So. Scott Grant is listening too. Scott He's Grant. How about Rod Davis? What a name. Rod, Rod Davis. I love it. That's got to work, right? That is super cool. All right, so uh, let me just, um, Sam De La Torre, spinning gear for local fishing. We talked about that. Yeah. And Sam, I also talked about that you and I are going to do some instructional stuff. Darren has some great ideas on all of that, so that's good stuff. Oh, my God, we got something so, else here. So the last thing that I, I brought to give to all of you, the viewers, well, not all of you, somebody who's going to win this uh, out of the viewers, is uh, something very special to 310 Rodworks. It actually... Um, was a prototype. It's a CP70H. It's actually a CP75H, seven foot five long. The only one that is built with this particular uh, woven carbon. And uh, it's essentially a, a, a 30 pound rod. So I put the line rating at 25 to 40, but this is a fantastic rod for this bluefin and any kind of 30 pound fishing that you're going to do, whether it's rockfish or yellowtail or local tuna. That's so, awesome. It's fantastic. And you can have me build it or take it to your rod builder. It's up to you. We're uh, going to have you build it. $160 value. Scott Buchert, who we've mentioned, Scott he was answering Buchert. all kinds of questions. Nice. It was his, I went to his birthday party the other that day. That is so cool. Happy birthday, Scott. I'm sorry Happy to birthday. get you a gift. So that's you. So you is. got a rod blank and we can do whatever you need. Do it. We have a few more thank questions. Thank you so much, yeah, you guys. Yeah, thank you, guys. And thank you for bringing all these great gifts. Oh, and yeah. Like I say, you are a fantastic guest. All right, let's see. Um, status on the E4 Hypalon. E4 Hypalon, we have had a ton of hiccups uh, on our way to getting the production sorted out. Um, more than I even care to admit that we've had. But it appears that we've got that pretty well under control. Um for probably the past, maybe the past month and a half, we've been short on half inch ID stuff, which is super popular today with the size of blanks that we're, we're, uh, we have in the market. Yeah. So we're a little bit short on that. That is getting solved now. Uh, we've got all the rear grip stuff that you need. And I'll be honest with you, man, that stuff is so close to what we used to have back in the 70s. Uh, for Hypalon grips. It is super dense. It has a very suede-like finish to it. Um, it's got great density, so it's more durable than the other product that's on the market today. Yeah. And uh, it and for you rod builders... That's all right. Keep going. So, we got another 10 uh, minutes. With, with respect to the E4 stuff, um, the nice thing mm -hmm. about what we're doing is, because I'm a rod builder, yeah. uh, and I use the product myself, I've identified that there's certain blanks that require uh, different size grips. Yeah. So instead of having half inch and 11 sixteenths as a basis, we actually have half inch, 5 eighths inch, 3 quarter inch, and 7 eighths inch ID grip material that we can accommodate you guys. So people that are building unibutt rods for fish and swordfish, guys that are on the East Coast that are building uh, big, big tuna rods. Yeah. Uh, that require that 7 8 material. We've got it in stock. We can we can grind the stuff up as you need it. And we're able to accommodate just about everything saltwater. Our E4 grips are not necessarily designed for freshwater. And so the uh, IDs may not go down small enough for even some of the, the swim bait rods. Yeah. Swim bait fishermen are different though. They want it very, very lightweight because our grips are very high density. Uh, they are heavier. Yeah. But... They work really good in, in the salt water and they have UV protection uh, added to the formula for the raw material. Yeah. They are a true made in the USA product, uh, which I'm very proud to say that uh, from the raw materials coming from the chemical company all the way through to the extrusion to my shop. Yeah. Everything is done right here in the USA. We are not getting any of that from overseas. All right, uh, quick answers. All right, because we're we're almost out. By the way, this show will be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, 
all your favorite platforms tomorrow. Cool. So people can listen in their cars. And all right, uh, Scott Grant. Quick question: What size rod for my Pen Thirty Visix? Need advice. Pen Thirty. My top pick would be a seventy-six Viper, seven and a half foot Viper. Perfect. I uh, love the Freeman Adventures family. Thanks for all the amazing info. Michael, we love you. Man, these people are, uh, they're the best. That's cool. Rocket Dog, uh, damn, that's a prize. Love your prizes. <laughs> Hoping you sign it. Hey, Daryl, that's from Jacob Fritz. Do you know him? Ah, yes. Uh -huh. Jacob. Love the E4. Hey. Perfect. What can I say? This was Thank you one so of much. our best shows. And the reason why. Ah, you're just saying that. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> The reason why was besides all these wonderful people, you, my friend, it well, was so good to see so you, much. Darren. Thank you for being here. I love being here. Man, that was fun, and we had... That was long. Matt, I Matt, couldn't believe it. Well, you, well, let's see. We went two hours and 35 minutes. Wow. That just went by like that. Yeah. I did a two-hour podcast before you walked in, too. So. <laughs> I'm just hitting my stride. Let's do another That's one. That's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. It's so good. Uh, contact info one more time. How can people okay, stay up with so you? Okay, if so they, if they want to get in touch with me, the easiest way is through Facebook. If you're on Facebook, otherwise, you can catch me at 310 Rodworks on Instagram, or you can call my cell phone. That's the best way to call me. That number is 310-710-5431. You can text me. You can call me. Sometimes I'm busy in the shop. I may not take your call right away, but I will get back to you. Soon. Darren Dohey, everybody. I thank you, Darren, so much. And thank Darren you. and I thank all of you thank so you very, very much. much. The best audience anywhere Ever. on the planet. <laughs> thank you, Darren. Thanks. All right, I'm going to walk up here, and I'm going to... What, what am I going to do? There we go. I, 